Jesus what I normally do is I pull all the shelves because Jesus didn't understand economics. Well, they go in the middle. I know, I'll put them upside down. From the talk of the town to the whisper of the village. Counter number four, please. Breaking global sports news and the answers to questions you never even thought to ask. Has anyone got a spoon for my kiwi fruit? The two mics. Just like in that film. On Talk Sport. Look at the light! This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. It's time to say a very, very good morning to a very unfortunate looking Mr. Mike, a porky parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. Yeah, <laughs> all, all, all I can say, Mike, is you're, oh, you're, you're, you're a ridiculous opener. I mean, What's ridiculous about it? Well, it, it, all you've done is you've written some load of rubbish to what try and wind me up. And you think well, I'm, not at all. You think I'm going to respond? You no, think what, what do you mean think I'm honestly going to respond? How have to, I wound you up? To your idiotic statement that uh, Romelu Lukuku... Uh, Lukuku? Yeah, Lukuku. Lukuku. ...was uh, humiliated tonight. Well, of course he was. Don't be re- Well, have you not listened to what the fans have said? What did he do? I'm not even going to respond to did that. Did he score a goal? Do you honestly well, think... Well, did he answer the question? Did honest, he score a goal? Do you honestly think I'm going to respond to the, the childish, imbecilic statement you put in your open with, oh, Ru, Roberto Martinez, has he got to go? The fans want the Roberto Martinez to go. Oh, which fan? The fans that have been ringing up the talk sport ever since the game has been over. Oh, really? Yeah, saying that Roberto Martinez is Could not the man. Could you give me the identity of a couple of them, please? Well, I mean, if you want to go back, if you want to go back through... I'm not aware of any fans ringing well, up well, saying not, that well, Roberto well, Martinez has got to go. Well, if you've been listening to the sports no, sport, no, you've heard quite a few of them. I'm any of any fans well, ringing I'm up sure, I'm sure we'll get How do you know they're Everton fans? fans? Well, because they say they're Everton fans. They say they're Everton fans. Are you fans? saying they're not Everton fans? I'm saying there is no will whatsoever amongst the Everton fraternity... Are you absolutely to, sure about for, that? Uh, absolutely certain for Roberto well, Martinez to go. Well, I'll tell you what, what some of these people were saying. They were saying things like uh, he's incapable of organising a defence, he's incapable of, uh, of, of making a team hang on to a lead. You know, they were 3-1 up. After all, were they not? I, I'm not. Were they re- not three one up? I'm not going to respond to all this. Were garbage they not three yours. one up? I'm not going to respond to all this garbage because I believe in dignity. Right. I do not believe in you know explosive reactions. I do not believe in shouting and screaming. I do okay. not believe in well, you trying believe to cite the right. fact okay. that the ball was well over the line. Oh. When Sterling oh, I don't need to crossed talk about it, that. there's no Sterling, point talking about that. The game's over now. When Sterling crossed it for the there's goal no, that changed the course of the no, match, there's no point in talking about that. I'm not going to even go into the fact that uh, Sterling was clearly offside when Manchester scored the game their is first over. goal. There's no point in moaning and groaning about it because the way the rule goes, and I looked it up at that moment. Did I you? went to my referee's uh, book <laughs> and I saw that the fa- uh, what it, what it rests on now is whether or not the goalkeeper's vision was impaired by a player yeah. in front of him, and it yeah. clearly was. What about that penalty that John? Stones clearly uh, committed in a previous game when uh, when he brought down Raheem Sterling and the referee didn't give it. What yeah. about that? Well, I, I, I didn't... Uh, did I, you look that up in your referee's handbook? I did, I did not make any comment about that and I'm not making any comment about what happened no, tonight. No, you said it was a clear penalty at the well, time. I'm more worried about it. I've just seen a blood stain on my shirt. No, it is more worried. Yeah, you're just trying to smash from. your wrist. I tell you what, yeah. I agree with you. I yeah. think you're quite right to take a dignified approach I'm taking and a not dignified to shout. Approach. But let's hear what you said before the game when you made yet another unofficial uh, appearance. Unofficial? Unofficial appearance. Unofficial appearance? On, somebody on and Hawksby says, and Jacobs. We'd like, to, we'd like well, to extract your expertise on the situation. Hmm? Oh, apparently, uh, Ollie's dropped something in the control room and we can't play that. What's he dropped? What's wrong with you? What do you mean he's dropped something? What has he done? Something gone wrong. Oh, well, never mind about that. We'll fix that. Um, no, right, we'll I, have to listen to it in a minute. I haven't even been bothered to find out the name of the referee who so culpably mismanaged the game because, you know, I might get tempted when I have a drink in the next couple of days to start sending hate mail to the person concerned. And therefore, I have, no, I, yeah, I have no... I have No, 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 I'm meeting this with dignity. I have no intention whatsoever of responding or reacting. And, you know, your nonsensical idiotic and childish plan to try and wind, wind me up as just well, It's not a matter fired. of winding you up. It's, a, it's, it's not a matter of winding you up. Let's have a listen to what you said before the game. I think we now have it. It's the most important game Everton have played for years, literally. You know, what a morale boost it'll be to get through tonight to meet Liverpool at Wembley in the League Cup final. It's, it's absolutely critical. And I have to say, I am a, I, I, already I'm in a state of sort of catatonic shock at the prospect of losing. <laughs> Yes, so, so is that why you're now in a state of catatonic shock? Well, maybe, maybe. I mean, I it, think you are. I it, think, it, I think, I think you're suffering. It was a, uh, I think it was suffering. a very important game, and yeah. everybody knows that. Yeah. However, because you have, of course, put your house famously on Everton winning the cup. You said the other night you didn't know which cup or which house. Now there's only one cup left. Um, look, uh, on Saturday yeah. we play Carlisle. Yeah. If we get through that, yeah. we are two. I've never seen you looking like this. We are two. <laughs> ga- two are you ga- sure you're not bleeding? 
uh, I don't know where this blood stain came from. Where is the blood stain coming from? Here, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Bizarre. But, uh, you have scratched a mole or something? No, no, I haven't. No, well, I've got a sort of a spot you on have, my arm. You know, you've got like some is, blood yeah. coming out of your arm. Yeah, OK, yeah. Um, no, what... Um, so I call for a nurse. No, thank you. What I'm saying is, is that we only have to win two games mm. after winning on Saturday. Hopefully yeah. we'll beat Carlisle. We should do. Yeah. Um, we will then be at Wembley. That'll yeah. be a Wembley appearance. So I'm not doom-laden or downtrodden or, or How feeling... Would you be at, where would you be at Wembley for? Uh, the semi-final of the FA Cup. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's the fourth on Saturday, yeah. then fifth, six, yeah. and then semi-final. Well, how will you get to Wembley if you beat Carlisle? Because we've got two more games to play in the fourth round, the fifth round, right. before... But I thought you... Well, before what you just sorry, said... Sorry, in the fifth round, the sixth round. You don't get round. to go to Wembley after you beat Carlisle. No, I said, I, if you listened and, and, and we're not obsessed I think your mind's by, gone. Uh, I'm I think your mind's gone. I'm not obsessed by trying valid. to wind me up. I'm not trying to wind you I've up. I've said three times, yeah. if Everton beat Carlisle on Saturday, yeah. they only need to win two more games yeah. to get to Wembley right. in the semi-final right. of the FA Cup, right? right? Is that clear enough yeah, for you? Yeah, OK. Well, let's go back Thickhead. two games and see when was the last time Everton won. Did you win the last game against Manchester City? Uh, no. I thought you Did just. Did you win the I last th- game? I thought you just said we're looking forward. We're looking forward. Well, no, though. but since you said let's well, go, I'm, I'm you not know, going into an inquest games. about it. I'm not going well, into I an inquest you, about it. I think it. we need to. I don't want to dwell on the fact that the I cross from the Sterling time, was when out. When was the last time Everton actually the, won? The City's first when the last goal time was Everton, offside. When was the last time Everton won a game? I refuse to get into. I'm not getting into this. It's, I can't it, remember. It is of. Have they won a game this year? It is of utterly no interest whatsoever. Have they won a game this year? I am not going to get into a debate about the whys and wherefores of it. Right. Manchester City showed their frailties tonight. Would you not agree that uh, Aguero showed Lukaku up, though? No, not at all. Really? Not at all. Aguero's a good player, but yeah. Lukaku is a very good player as well. Yeah, but Lukaku so, didn't do anything. So it's absolute nonsense. Well, Lukaku didn't do anything. Let's have another listen uh, to your analysis before the game. OK. What Everton deserve is to get to not just one cup final, but two cup finals to justify the quality of players we've got and the fact that we have pulled together a really top-class football team. That's the wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's the wrong clip. Well, it's not my fault. If you if, if you can't organise something, you're incompetent no. in trying to show me up. It's now absolutely vividly. Apparent no, no. to the uh, no, no. audience out now there. The millions listening now around the world. The, now we're going to play the correct. Regard clip. you as the oaf, no, not me. Gonna, now we're going to play the correct. It's not a question of you being an oaf. It's a question of what you said about Sergio Aguero. Well, it is a concern, but when you say that, every team and our team is, is included has got a star player, and our star player is Lukaku. So I think you'll find that Manchester City will be worrying a lot more about Lukaku than we'll be worrying about any of their forwards. Yes. Well, that was, did prove to be very correct, didn't it? It, it certainly did. I mean, I mean, but Lukaku didn't score a goal. Wouldn't you like to talk about Barkley's goal? Wasn't it exceptional? It wasn't a very good Utterly goal. Utterly exceptional. But it's going to be forgotten, isn't it, unfortunately. Isn't it, isn't it good it's that we've got... Uh, well, it's going to be forgotten about because, you got, know, he scored it first. So Everton went 3-1 up in the game. Yeah. And then they lost the lead. Isn't it good that we've got Barkley to play for England I next think, summer I in think uh, if France. I was an Everton fan, I'd be, I'd be pretty fed up with the way Roberto Martinez is handling yeah, the team. Yeah, but you're not an Everton fan, I'm so... Not. Frankly, we don't give a monkey's what you think well, because no, you don't know what it's like to hear, support a team hear, anyway. I want to hear from Everton fans because I'm sure there will be Everton fans out there mm. who are very, very upset and fed up with the way that Roberto Martinez is allowing Everton's season, which started so promisingly, yeah, but you see, to go down the You've got nothing better to do in life than try and wind people up. That's I mean, not my choice. I what think I'm you're saying. pathetic because you don't support a football club, well, so why, you have why, no idea why, of the instincts well, of me. a football fan. No, talking you, about you're me. talking about you. No, we're not talking about you. You're talking about you. I thought you said you were going to be calm. You're coming out with all these wild... I thought you said you were going to be calm. These wild, childish-like statements. thinking Thinking that you're going to... Um, you know, wind me up, thinking that I'm going to explode I'm not to wind you up. I'm and just start tra- I'm just swearing telling, I'm just at telling, you. I'm just telling, telling you the, the way it is. What a dumb cough you are, I'm you know. I'm just telling you the way it is. And how that I knew you would do all this sort of thing, and I prepared myself mentally for it. So if I were you, mate, I'd be going to stick your head in a, you know, a barrel of <laughs> boiling oil or something like that to improve the looks in your face, because you're not going to get me wound up, well, OK? Well, I'm not trying to wind anybody up. I'm just trying yeah. to find out from you yeah. why on earth you're still loyal to Roberto Martinez, who seems to be taking Everton down a path which is not going to get them anything. Our English tennis star's playing tonight, isn't she? Johanna Conta I'm, is, indeed. I'm looking forward to that. That's yeah, fantastic. I am looking I love forward to, to see, that. Who's she playing? I'd love to see. She's playing... Uh, she's playing... Uh, Who's she playing? Annie Skerger. Huh? What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Annie Skerber. Well, no, no. Aniska. Aniska? Yeah. No, she's playing Angelique. That's right, yeah. Gerber. Yeah, Angelique Gerber, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like, okay. if you think of Gerber's baby... Gerber's Baby, never heard of it. You never heard of Gerber's Baby? Angelique, I can remember that, because that's like um, a very famous actress woman with the lips. What's her name? Hey? You know, she's married to Brad Pitt. Angelina. Angelina, Not Angelique. Yeah. 
Angelina. Yes, that's a nice name. So is that it then? You don't want to talk about Everton? Well, what's the point? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I mean, how, well, how, how long do you want to bore Everton the so audience? This. How long do you want to bore well, the audience well, uh, with, I mean, with well, a game? Long, how long would you be boring the audience if Everton were going to play the Merseyside Cup final? Well, how long not, would that have gone not, on for? They're not. Yeah, they're it's not, not happening. They're not. It's not happening. Did you see all the game? Roberto Martinez see all the game? has killed it off. Did I have seen all the game, yeah. Did you see all 90 minutes of it? Roberto Martinez has killed Everton off. No, no, no. They're not going to win anything. They're going to finish in the bottom half of the table. And for a team that is supposedly the most entertaining in the Premier League, I think that that is ridiculous. And for you, having Attacked, uh, you know, Jurgen Klopp, having attacked Brendan Rodgers, having attacked no, Louis van Gaal, attack having attacked Jose Mourinho, having, a, having attacked every him. single manager in the Premier League. Yeah. I find it astonishing you're, that you think that Roberto Martinez is doing a good job. You're really out of control. You are. If Manchester Manchester City have been given the time, a way. bottomless pit of money, oh, it's so a money they, thing. So, now. so hang on, oh, it's all about they, money. They now, could. Is it? Dr- oh. they, what about Leicester? They, they could, haven't got a bottomless sh- pit of money. Sh- sh- we're not talking about Leicester. We played Manchester City tonight. Considering the amount of money that Manchester City have at their disposal, yeah. they are massive underachievers. Uh-huh. They've got access to five, six, seven, so eight, nine, ten billion Doesn't pounds. Matter. They're not top they of the league. They are massive underachievers. They're not top of the league. That's what, what I mean. you said before. That's, that's what you, I'm saying. They're you, massive under Jesus. You've said every week that we don't have free money. That you've said every week we don't that we've have free been on. Money. You've said every week that we've been on this show. Everton that you survives. Believe, you believe that Martinez and Everton are punching under their weight. Everton survives on the goodwill, the dedication, the devotion of four or five generations of good working class people from the city of Liverpool, from North Wales, from the north of England, and around the world <laughs> who put their hands in their pockets to support oh, yeah, a right, team yeah. that has well, the tradition and the history and the heritage. Up of the finest clubs in this country. They're Manchester City cannot claim that sort of background. Yeah, how about this one from Sam? Lou, Lou, Lou Kaku. More like Lou, Lou, loser Kaku. Mm. That's what he says. That's very original. It. This is Talk Sport. Lou Kaku. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The enduring home of football. It's modern radio. Only better. Talk Sport. Better catch your own train. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There's loads coming up. We've got Johanna Conte, of course, in her semi final. The first time since 1983. We'll mm. have some porky mm. uh, commentary on that one, of course. Lisa O'Sullivan will keep us updated on it as well. Porky Vision coming up as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, lots and lots of texts and tweets coming in. I should read you a few of them. Some of them might make you feel a bit better about yourself. Well, I'm you not bleeding, by uh, the way. Uh, uh, stop bleeding at yeah. the moment. Um, I guess who's stop getting. Blue, that guess, blood. Who's, guess who's trying to get involved in this debate? Who? What does the what does the name Neil Custis mean to you? Neil Custis. Yeah. What do you think of immediately when you hear of Neil, Neil Custis? Neil Custis is a, a, as you've called him many times, a very important and a re- well revered journalist. Oh, right? I've done that for years, yeah. but unfortunately, somebody mm. who's more famous than me, Louis Van Gaal, yeah. recently branded him as the fat the man. The fat man. That's okay? true. Yeah. And uh, why is Neil Custis sending you tweets? Well, there's a tweet here which uh, comes allegedly from somebody called Neil Custis. Yeah. Uh, Are you it's, sure it's him though? Well, it seems to be. Seems to be. You know, we've got a few followers and all this kind of stuff. Of, says mm. football writer of the Sun newspaper yeah. going Manchester Manchester City, and he says, "Stop going on about the ball being over the line." City battered Everton. That's true. Oh, I see. Well, I thought it, this man was supposed to be a purist, you know, in the way that footballs play. Mm. You know, the, an well, appreciator of the fo- beautiful game. Well, anyone and all who's that, a football purist who will, now, will tell you who now because he he lives and exists in the northwest of England yeah. and therefore is uh, myopic in his vision. Right, when it comes to teams other than Manchester United, Manchester City... Are you saying he's a Manchester United fan? That they should be allowed to cheat. Yeah. They should be allowed to get no, away with... No, it's the rub with, of the green. You know, it's the rub of the green. Decisions... It's the rub of the which green. Which means they score goals which should have been rubbed off. It's the rub of the and green. And then sends me moaning and whinging notes. Has he said St- it to you? Yeah. Stop going on about ball being <laughs> over the line. City battered well, Everton. They did, though. I mean, what about Aguero's shot that hit the post? I mean, that was really fantastic. One of the goals of the one of the goals of the cup. Uh, a really great player would have put a bit of swerve on that and made sure. What you mean, like Lukaku? Would have gone in. Yes, that's well, right. Like Lukaku, yeah, I do, the man, yeah. the man. Or, How about this or, from or, uh, Chris or Ross Barkley? How about this from Chris? Who says mm. it's time for Martinez to fall on his sword. His inability to organise defence is legendary. I'm sure he was misheard. I think he promised Mr K Championship, not Champions League football. Do you think it was cruel of Louis Van Gaal to brand Neil Costas the fat man? Yes, I think it might have been cruel. Well, but, I mean, all, all, uh, well, all is fair in love and war. on television more. last Sunday morning. And, uh, I mean, you know, they needed a widescreen lens for Why are you having to... a go at Neil Custis? Because he seems to be having a go at me. Right. You so know? Why, are you ref- why are you responding? Because... He's only talking about football in a purest sense. Because I... I... After a while. After all... The, the, the game is over. You I'm trying to maintain my it. dignity, that's why. Well, you're maintaining it very well. Yes, thank I you. I don't think you should make a personal attack on Neil Custis. Well, you know, 
I, you know, I just want the boy to know we're watching him. We're watching him, OK? How about this one? Working class Everton fans keep Everton running, do they? Mm. You're not working class, Parry. You have more money than you know what to do with, says That's Jack, rubbish. the Manchester City fan. I'm absolutely He's working class. City till I die. I am absolutely working class. Jim says, as with many of Porky's wild and empty claims, his assertion that he'd maintain his dignity lasted about 60 seconds. No, it didn't. At which point he told MG to go and put his head into boiling oil yeah, to right. improve his appearance. Actually, I was going to Some suggest... Some kind of dignity. Do you know what? Do you know what? I was dignified. And do you know why? Wait. I was going to suggest you put another piece of your anatomy in a barrel of boiling oil, all really? right? Yeah. What piece? Because that'd be a bit more painful. What piece right? are you talking about? But then I decided that I didn't want to shame the uh, the content of the show. Yeah. So I... You uh, seem very unsettled. Uh, I'm not settled. I'm not settled. Dennis says this. Stop complaining, Porky. Mm. Always got an excuse for Everton when they lose. Why don't you just admit they're rubbish? Uh, what? Why don't you just admit they're rubbish? They're not rubbish. When was why. the last time Everton won a football match? I'm not going into that. This is it's look, this this show is not come has not been put on air tonight to focus on Everton. Right? Well, okay. Because we're gonna focus on Everton. Okay. It was, a, it was the semi-final of the League Cup. So last Manchester night. City One have of the got cups. through to the final of a two bob competition. Oh, it's right? a two bob no competition. Problem at all. Oh now it's a two bob competition. That's happened. We can forget about that. Now let's move on and talk about something in which the audience will be interested. All right, let me read you some more of the comments from the audience though. Okay. Mike says this Martinez was saying on TV just a few weeks ago, Coleman, Stones, Barkley and Lukaku were the best young players in Europe. Yes. He also claimed Baines to be the most complete left-back in world football. Mm. And he says Barry is the greatest midfielder England's ever had. So if Martinez is correct, then he should be sacked for having such great talent and being in the bottom half of the table. Surely that makes perfect sense. It doesn't make perfect sense at all. You know what it's all like. You know that it's very difficult to uh, to pull a potpourri of assorted footballers you together and make them into a team. Well, not at all. But, but not at all. it's something that's being worked on. I mean, look, this is, this is the sort of uh, tweet I like tonight. One of the worst refereeing decisions I've ever seen. Everton were well and truly robbed. That they were comes not from robbed. Owen. Owen, well done. Yeah, but Thank they were very robbed, much though, indeed. Because okay? what goes around comes around. As I said, I mean, Everton gave away a penalty yeah. in the other previous game, mm-hmm. uh, but it wasn't a penalty. It wasn't given, was it? What? What? When, when Stones brought Sterling down, well, it wasn't, and the penalty wasn't given. Well, in the referee's view, it wasn't a penalty. That's why it wasn't well, yeah, given. Yeah, but in your view, it was a penalty. You said it was a penalty. I don't think And in I everybody's view, it was a penalty. Uh, I think we should move on, actually, because um, what I want to talk to you about is some very interesting uh, subjects that we can talk about tonight. Like what? For instance... I don't want to move on. I want uh, to talk more because about our, uh, our girl in, uh, in Australia is uh, going to be playing tonight, which yeah, is yeah, very you've exciting. Already said that. You've already yep. tried to use that as an escape hatch. You can't use well, it as an escape, escape hatch continually. Hatch. I'm just going to Here's one from Frank, who's a Liverpudlian, who says, Mr. Parry, I respect you as a blue, but the time has come for Martinez to go. Would you have uh, Moyes back? That is just panic talk. That's a good talk. idea. That's Why don't you take David Moyes back? Don't be ridiculous. Why it's not? just panic talk. It's just panic talk. Well, you know, where are Everton in the league at the moment? Well, you know where they are in the league. Why are you asking me all these ob- obvious questions well, for? What's your problem? Because I want you to confirm their position. Well, listen, can I tell you, 90% yeah. of the audience... They've won a game this year. 90%, it's nearly February. 90% of our audience are not Everton or Manchester City fans. So they wonder why we're still rattling on about an inconsequential game that took place over three hours ago, four hours ago, finished uh, three and a half hours ago. Uh, the world moves on. Football's a very fast-moving it game. It is a very fast-moving game. Yes. But I want to talk about what could have been because it could have been a Merseyside final which you said would have been fantastic yes, it by the way uh, you're mm. now free on February the 28th and you might know that earlier on in the uh, evening I actually yes. put out a tweet which mm. said can we have some suggestions for what Mike Parry could do on February the 28th because now he's not going to have anything else to do mm. apart from uh, you know mm. wander about and go yeah. to Weatherspoon. so I, I've got some I great see. suggestions for you if you'd like to hear some of them um, the purpose of being what I mean what, what am I doing on maybe the weekend of March the 7th or March the what, 14th. What are you doing on the 7th? Or March, March the 21st? Or March the 28th? I don't know, because well, it's, it's inconsequential. Well, Who no. cares? Well, no, because obviously... Nobody you, cares what I'm doing. You might have been... Well, after your performance on Hawksby and Jacobs, I'm assuming you would have been expected to go to the Wembley. It, had Everton got through, well, I would said love to have been able to say that I was preparing to go to a cup final at Wembley. Well, but should, well, my I team rem- aren't playing there now, so it'd be silly for me to go, well, should it? I remind you about what you said on the warm-up on Sunday? What, what, with your what's, mate this Max. Got, what's this got to do with well, it? Well, because you said Everton were going to beat Swansea. You said you were certain that they were going to beat Manchester City. Uh, and then you were also certain they were going to beat Carlisle. I think they Some will. people have tweeted with, uh, so far, two big crosses. Yes. Um, and, you know, Carlisle, we'll still wait and see the result. What do you think I am? Some sort of, you know, uh, soothsayer, some seer. Well, you know, I can see into the future. But you I can't. On, but you seem to go on talk sport every five minutes talking about how great Everton are. So I think I'm entitled to call you to account. No, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't say that at all. In New Jersey, they've started sacking fat people from their jobs. Don't try and uh, change the subject. I just wonder if you feel unsettled and uh, and worried about your position. Eh? Do you? 
What are you talking about? Do you feel unsettled and worried about your position? Why would I? Because in New Jersey, yeah. you know, which is a place you know very well, having uh, lived over there for I quite do, a do. long time, yeah. the, the, the law's now been passed that you can sack fat people from their jobs really? because they are inefficient compared to people well, who are of normal weight. If you're attacking me for being fat, I don't mind. Just tell me your waist size and your no, collar no, size. No, no, I'm and concerned we'll go from for there. you. I'm concerned for you. All I'm right, just well, asking. Do you, you, do you, you fear can... for your position? Uh, certainly not. I don't live Why in New Jersey. Why have we got a load of reinforced new chairs out there? Are they for you? Uh, I don't know. You've seen them all, have you? What's your colour size? They've got new logos What's on them. What's your waist them, you know, size? It says Talk Sport. What's your waist size? I, I'm talking to you and trying no. to get you to... Right. to uh, well, I'm answering you. Focus. Let's talk to David. Focus. Instead. Do you Is like it... being fat? Who's a Liverpool fan? I'm not fat. David, good morning. Welcome Hello. to the show. Would you like to take Porky's mind off Everton? Uh, they've got to get rid of Martinez. That's, sorry, uh, sorry, David. Which, which club do you support? Uh, the best team in Liverpool. And what's that? Liverpool. So why are you trying to tell me, an Evertonian, what we should do with our club? Don't you think you should concentrate on what you should do with your club? Yeah, you know? I, I do, and I'm passing on some solid advice as what we've done, you should do. You don't sound like a man from Merseyside to me, David. We're a worldwide um, club. We've well, got fans all over the world. And where, are you, where are you from? Uh, Western Supermare. Western Supermare. That's near Bristol, isn't it? Are you from Liverpool? No, Correct. No. Yeah. You, no, excuse me, are you from Liverpool? I'm talking to David. No. Are Don't you be from rude. Liverpool? Don't be rude. Are you from Liverpool? David, it's no wonder you found, tried to find another <laughs> club to support, I Liverpool, because as you live near Bristol, and Bristol yeah. is the, the most unimportant and biggest failed football city Shocking. in this country, Correct. right? Correct. It's no wonder yep. you looked elsewhere. So that just shows where your loyalty is like, yeah. doesn't it, David? You know, you've no. abandoned your, your local <laughs> roots, you've abandoned yeah. your local people. Remember dignity. You've yeah. ab- dignity you've at ab- all times. You've abandoned your yeah. local club, and you've, all you've yeah. done is you've just put a dart in the board of Britain and come up with who, who shall I support? And you're now a plastic scouser and a plastic Liverpool fan, aren't you? Well, you could say that. On yes, the I could hand. say that. You I have could... said that. I have said you, that. You... Okay. David, what, what, David, let me help you, you out here. Of, uh, David, one David, of the biggest clubs in the world. David, let me help you out here. Why don't you ask Porky where he's from? Why? Where are you from, Porky? What's that got to do with it? I'm well, from Chester. <laughs> so you're not from Liverpool either? No, I've never claimed to be from Liverpool. Well, I'm from Chester. Well, how can you support a Liverpool club if you're from Chester? Because my parents were born and brought up in Birkenhead, ah, right, okay. which is part of the... Well, I mean, Chester, in fact, is part of the, uh, you know, the captive area of, of support around Merseyside. It's, it's at the you bottom of the world. You where my parents were from. Where are your parents from, David? Uh, close to me, Western Supermare. So well, they could have been from Liverpool. Yeah, well, they're not. From, they're not from Liverpool, are they? Western seems, Super yeah. Mare. Seems to me it's you're, a, you're like a sixth generation Western Supermarian. Third generation. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And why, yeah. Why, so why did you pick? Why did you pick Liverpool? Was that because you know you once saw them win the Is cup there a, final? You're a decent team. No, I, I, I once. I remember when I was a child, the first time I watched football, and I, I saw this magnificent sea of red yes. and this beautiful noise from the cop. And which was and the game? They were worshipping King Kenny Dalglish. And which was the game? The greatest human being ever to walk this planet. And what game was that? Who were Liverpool playing that day? <sighs> Doesn't matter. I think we we um, we lost to Brighton in the cup. I think you lost to Brighton in the cup. You think, but yeah. you don't know. Prob- well, I, uh, uh, yeah. Oh well, that must five. have made that must have made a huge impression <laughs> upon you, David. I, David, I, I, David I, 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 allow me to fan. allow me to apologise on behalf mm. of Talk Sport, David. I know you called up in good faith, mm. and I'm sorry that you've been subjected to a tirade of abuse uh, from the plastic uh, Everton fan from Chester. David, thank you very yeah, much for your call. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Here's yeah, one from, really uh, enjoyed here's a, that. Here's a tweet from Simon. He says, Weatherspoons are doing half price fish and chips <laughs> night uh, and karaoke on the 28th of February. <laughs> Uh, well, that's that, that, that really amused you, sport. that, hasn't it? It has, really yeah. amused you, yeah. It has. Because you wouldn't know what it's like you. to support a football club because you never have. I might join you. Damned thickhead. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Freedom for sport. Can we kick it? Yes, we can. Talk Sport. You're a nut. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Uh, don't forget, uh, coming up in a little while, Johan Contat is going to be on uh, with her semi final down in the Australian Open, so we'll see how that gets, uh, that is, gets on. That is going to be fantastic. It is, good. isn't it? Now, how mm. about this from Georgie, who's uh, texted into 81089? Yes. Porky is totally out of touch about the us, very many fans that are actually watching the Martinez glorified Wigan, aka Everton, getting regularly mm. battered and bullied by every team. Moyes left it with a solid defence, a thing alien to Martinez. He is totally out of depth in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kieran says, as an Everton fan, I'm with about 75% of Everton fans I see on Twitter. Martinez out. 
Yeah, but I'm not going to join a bandwagon of Martinez out. Anonymous fans like that, right? OK, they're entitled to their view, no problem at all. But they should not become a pressure group putting pressure on the club. The club is extremely well run. And to start, the, you know, a campaign, manager out, manager out, do you know how much turmoil that can create inside a club? Yeah, but you can't be happy with this performance, surely. I'm not happy with Everton results. But you, well, well, don't you blame the manager for that? You keep saying you've got these great players. You've got Barkley, uh, you've yeah, got yeah. Baines, you've got Lukaku, who you keep raving on about look, as one of the great goal look, scorers I'm not of the only. Time. I'm not the only person at Everton not happy with Everton results. Right. And, and everybody connected with Everton is not happy with the results. You'd be a madman to say you're happy with the results yeah. because we're in the lower half of the table. We now Alex did a, a cup that we thought we'd get to the final of, or hoped that we would, and we're in the FA Cup. But, you know, there's a lot of factors in a football club that contribute to the fact that the results always don't always turn out the way you want them to. There are a lot and of factors. And I, th- I think we'll get it right. But when was the last I, I, game? I think we'll get it right when was the, Mr Martin. when was the last game Everton won? That was a simple question I asked Mike, you about stop 15 asking, minutes ago. Just stop ask, asking a repetitive and boring question. Well, when was it? I... Look, I am not going to go into it because I'm not going to be put on the spot to defend a club in whom I have total faith. I think it was against Dagenham and Redbridge. Right, fine. Well done. If you knew the, well, the question, why did you waste your time asking me? Well, I think that was when it was. I don't know. OK, that's fine. Because I don't think they've won a game in the league this year. Well, well Dagenham and Redbridge was this 11. month because it was third round of the FA Cup. So, you know, I don't know why you ask me questions you know the answer to. That, I don't that, know the answer. That, well, you just told me the answer. No, and I it's think... just a provocative load of rubbish. No, it's not. I'm saying I think that uh, Dagenham mm. and Redbridge was the mm. last victory, but that was in the Cup, right? Mm. So in the league, I don't think they've won since, I don't know, I don't know, maybe November. All right, well, if you don't know, don't worry well, about I'm it. Why you. does it concern you? You're not an Everton fan. You're not a fan of any football club. You because don't know... we're here to inform the public. You don't know about the passion that comes with supporting a club all your life, and mm. you don't know about the pain that well, happens said, there's no when pain disappointments involved. occur. Well, you said it was, no, it was a tuppence tapety cup anyway, so, I mean, why is there any pain involved? No, I didn't. I was you being did. mischievous when I said a two-bob cup. Yeah. By that, I meant in relation to the FA Cup, uh-huh. which is... And we we uh, continue to be on the road to Wembley in the FA Cup right. on Saturday. Look, of course, I would love to have got through and been in the final of the League Cup. Right. It is a tremendous competition for a um, any club to go to Wembley, and the fans go there and, and feel very proud and all that. And I hope that it's a great day out for the Manchester City and Liverpool fans. Will you be watching it? No, I probably won't, actually. No? I probably won't. I'm not, not, I will. Not, not out of envy or malice or anything like that, but frankly, I think, is it 4.30 on a Sunday afternoon it takes place or something well, like that? Well, it's on the 28th of February. 28th of Feb, yeah, yeah, and I think it kicks off at 3 o'clock or 4 yeah. o'clock or something like that. Uh-huh. And if my team aren't there, I don't often, I, I very, very rarely sit down and watch games of football live which don't include my own club. Is that right? Yeah, my own team, because, so, you know, the world's a busy right. place. Well, don't worry, we've got plenty of suggestions for what you can be doing instead. Well, I don't want any suggestions, thank you. I'm perfectly happy in knowing how to use, fully use and utilise my time. So okay. it's very kind of people to send suggestions in. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. But all you're doing, really, is pandering to the, you know, crass stupidity and, <laughs> and infantile behaviour of Mike Graham. Uh, and, and, and you're getting sucked into, you know, his silly little plot... Because he not thinks he's embarrassing me, which I'm he isn't, not, by I'm the not, way. I'm not embarrassing Dignity, dignity yeah. is the word I want to apply to the show tonight. Dignity. Indeed. Dignity, yes. Dignity. Let's talk to Steve, uh, yeah. who's in Tamworth. Hello, Steve. Oh, hi, guys. Yeah, hi. Yeah. What would I you think, like to say, Steve? Yeah, I think Everton will be mad to get rid of Martinez. Yes. Yeah, so well, well, are, are, Everton, Everton. are you an Everton fan? No, I'm a Man United well, fan. No, well, so that, well, that would be football. Well, that would be why you want to keep Martinez. Whenever I've watched Everton, I've been entertained. I mean, by the rules of the game, they have won in the league this year. The Stamford Bridge two weeks ago, three two. Um, no, no, it was three three. I'm, I'm no, afraid. No, it was three yeah, three. I'm afraid. But yeah. Steve, what sort of, of a, game, what sort of a football fan are you, mate? Heaven's sake! Yeah, by the, by the rules of the game, that that should have been a three two to Everton. Of course oh, it should. Oh, because... Excuse me. Oh, so what you're saying? Have you got a complete? You've got an alternative uh, results no, table. No, last goal was offside. You've got an alternative results so, table. Is that what, what you're telling me? Okay. What? Well, what I'm saying is, if that referee decision had been correct... Yeah, but it was. But it doesn't matter. That was the score. Know, it's 3-3. Three, three. It doesn't matter. But there's, Mike, no point, Martin, there's no point Martin, in you ringing Martin, up, Steve. Mike, no, Steve, there's Mike, no point in you ringing up just and telling down. me... I'm perfectly calm. And there's no point in you ringing up. At our, at our there's guests. no point in you just ringing up. up. There is no point in you ringing up and telling me that the score was 3-2, but everyone knows it was 3-3. Three, three. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm saying by the rules of the game, it was 3-3. Yeah, don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I, I, this wild behaviour against uh, the callers who are good enough to call in and contribute to the show... I've been talking to callers on this show for a very long time. Well, Don't well, you worry about it. Yeah, well, that's why we haven't got many these days, because you're rude <laughs> and abusive to them. You know, if you get your act together, yes. man, straighten up. You I'm, know, perfectly, we, we I'm perfectly might calm. A, might have a more successful formula. Carry on, Steve. What else do you want to say? Oh, 
Yeah, so uh, two refereeing decisions. You could be looking at Martinez as a great manager, a Wembley final, mm. and uh, a win at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, I think they'll finish not far off the top four this season. What? Yes, no, I, to- I totally agree. You've gone I- mad, Steve. No, Steve, I'm I mean, saying. Right. Have you gone mad? What do you think, of Louis, Van- what do you think of Louis Van Hal? You think he's good as well? Uh, no, <laughs> no, Steve. Do you not no, well, think? Do you not so think? So you have got some uh, basis in reality. Yeah, though. Steve. Do you not think yeah, da- bit... David Moyes should have been given more time at Manchester United? Because clearly he's a better manager and yeah. had a better idea of what to do than Louis Van Gaal. He, he, uh, definitely another season. Yes, yeah. exactly. He's yeah. a better manager than Roberto Martinez as well. Sorry, he's a, better, man- like... he's a better manager than Roberto well, that, Martinez. That, that's just a, that's just a valid judgment, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. what yeah. do you but think? Sorry, we're in the entertainment business as well. Whenever I watch Everton, I see goals and, and yes. counter attacking for. I do enjoy watching them. Good. Um, oh, very happy a, for as, you. As a football fan. Yeah, but, good. Um, and I think people like Martinez should be backed and supported. They've had a good run in the Carling Cup. Mm. Um, who knows the FA Cup? We don't know. It's but not yeah, the I Carling think... Cup anymore. <laughs> well, it's the League so, Cup, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm not, sure, I'm not to, sure you thought this all of this through, Steve. To I be just wanted to say, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a neutral, I, I, I'd support Martinez. Yeah, yeah well, that's already good. Well, that's great. And Steve, thank you for ringing. He's up. a great manager. Yeah, Steve, and thank I, you um, very much indeed. So there you go. You see, you've got people from other teams in the Premier League uh, wanting Martinez yeah. to stay. Why do you think that is? And Steve, I'm extremely sorry about the <laughs> boorish behaviour of Mike yeah. Graham. How who, about this then? Who, who um, frankly, is so out of control tonight. Why don't we, I, I think he's been drinking since, too much since, coffee. Since we're talking about boorish behaviour, why don't we have mm. a listen to what you said you would do to me mm. uh, a little bit earlier on when you were on Hawksby and Jacobs? Because here you are sitting there mm-hmm. uh, like Mr. Calm and Collected, yes. right? Dign- Mr. Dignity. Dignity. Have a Dignity. Listen to this. So, look, if you're, you'll be in a good mood with uh, Mike Graham uh, in extra time if you win. If not, is, you think he'll be trying to wind you up, Mike? Well, he'll try, but fortunately, he's thicker than my fridge door when it comes to trying to talk to me about matters Everton or football or anything like that. So this is a warning to Mike Graham right now. He tries to mess with my mind tonight. I'll destroy him mentally. I might even destroy him physically when he's not looking. Dignified, mm-hmm. eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. dignified. Well, So threatening me with violence, uh, no. accusing me of being thicker than your fridge door, yes. which may or may not be blue, yes. uh, which may or may not be broken. Yes. That's all OK, is it? Well, you know as well as I do that that was satirical stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. That's what we do on TalkSport, oh, right. you know, those of us who are of that persuasion, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, satire. And, and it's a uh, great, satire. It's a great satire. skill, yeah. And you just have to, I'm afraid, adapt to that. You know, you, you, you're not up to that sort of level yet, but if you keep trying, you might be. And you know full well that I would never resort to violence because violence... Because you're frightened of me. No, no, no. no. There you are. Everybody's seen the punching uh, competition we had where you scored 400 and I scored 650. Violence is the recourse of the ignorant, Okay, And I'm not ignorant. But you're always threatening me with violence. I believe only in dignity. Do you? And the dignity... What about me having to put my head into a vat of boiling oil? Yeah, well, as I say, I was actually thinking of another part of your body which I said you can go and stick that in a barrel of boiling oil. Which part of my body were you thinking about? Well, I think it's fairly obvious, isn't it? Really? But as this is a family show, I'm not oh, going right. to get into the details. I don't think you could manage to get your, any, any part of you into a bo- vat of boiling oil apart from your face. Well, what does that mean? What, what kind of a stupid comment is that? Just think about it. No, I'm not thinking about it. Think because about it. It's just ridiculous. The show's all about dignity tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Dignity, so, uh, please. please give us a call mm. uh, and help Porky out. Tell him uh, what you think Roberto Martinez should do. 08717 This is Talk Sport. I'm only even destroy him physically when he's not looking. As every sports person knows, timing is everything. It can be the difference between standing on the podium and going home empty handed. It can be the difference between a sweet first touch that finds the corner of the net and the missed kick that ends up in row Z. And when it comes to hereditary hair loss, timing is vital as well. Because the earlier you start using Regain for Men Extra Strength Scalp Foam, the higher your chances of success. An estimated 7.5 million men in the UK experience hereditary hair loss, many of them before they're 35. But fortunately, Regain is on hand with all the information and support you need to help you separate the facts from the fiction. If you've noticed you're starting to lose your hair, you need to understand exactly why it's happening and what you can do about it. And now, Regain has an app that gives you support and advice to track your progress and maintain your twice-daily routine. Download the Regain for Men iPhone app from the App Store today and start separating the facts from the fiction at regain.co.uk. Regain contains minoxidil. Always read the label. This Friday, the Euro Millions jackpot from the National Lottery is a staggering £99 million. Plus, it's a mega Friday, and there'll be seven guaranteed UK millionaires. Play makes it possible. Estimated jackpot, games, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. It's how London buys 
When Car Giant has a sale, we make it a giant one with up to 8,000 cars in stock and some jaw dropping reductions in price. Car Giant. Car Giant. Car Giant. Car Giant, of course. Car Giant. Come see us at our giant showroom in White City. It's how London buys its cars. Sale ends January 31st. Visit cargiant.co.uk. It's how London buys its cars. Car Giant. Talk sport. Honest, diligent, and remarkable. Amazing. We of course a podcast coming out a little bit later on. We're talking mm. about Everton's uh, devastation uh, at being kicked out of the League Cup last night by Manchester City. They were three one up uh, and ended up losing by four goals to three. A couple of people have uh, pointed out that the last win in the league yes. uh, was against Newcastle at uh, St James's Park. Absolutely, uh, way back on uh, I think last it was, minute uh, Boxing Day. Yeah, I think. Boxing Day twenty six. Uh, and here's one from Scouser who says, "Mr. Parry, mm. it's highly unlikely Everton will beat Carlisle on Saturday uh, as they are not playing uh, until Sunday." Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much for pointing that out. Yeah. Let's talk mm-hmm. to Adrian Heath, a man yep. uh, who, of course, uh, has seen better days with Everton, I guess you might say. Indeed. Uh, and find out what he makes of their performance last night and what he makes of Roberto Martinez. Uh, Mr Heath, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Good morning, fellas. Yeah, How hi, you Adrian. Doing? Yeah, well, I was doing okay. Doing, like? I was doing all right till about four hours ago and then, uh, you know, it all came un- unravelled a bit. But I, th- I thought... You know, after we scored that, I mean, yeah, Ross Barkley scored a brilliant goal there, Adrian. And I thought, wow, that's uh-huh. given us a two goal cushion. We've got to get on with it. So, you know, I have to admit what the critics are saying. We are having trouble hanging on to these leads. We are. And um, I think they needed to hold on a little bit longer. You know, obviously, it was an unfortunate deflection, yeah. you know, from off, off Leighton Baines. And it was difficult for the keeper to do anything about it. But. You know, they needed really to, to, to get some more momentum in the game and make Man City a bit more desperate. Mm. And I thought, you know, they scored a little bit too early for my liking and it gave them some momentum. And uh, as you say, it's been disappointing. You know, the last few weeks mm. have been really disappointing, culminating in this. And, you know, having played there for so long, I know, speaking to my friends on, on Merseyside, how much they wanted to have another all Merseyside final. So mm. I think, obviously, there's huge disappointment just because they've lost the semi-final, but the fact that it would have been an all Merseyside uh, final would have been another great occasion for the two clubs. It, it certainly would have done. Do you play in one, Adrian, in 84, was it? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah was... we played in the League Cup. That's right. When we, uh, nil-nil. When we got robbed of a, got robbed again, Mike. That's you know, right, and, we and did. And Anson and it on the line. Yeah. So, uh, but hang on, hang on, hang on, Adrian. Let's, let's just quickly. talk about let's just talk about being robbed, okay? Because uh, as Porky the other night was talking about mm. the stats on possession uh, and all the rest of it between Liverpool and Stoke, mm. Everton had two shots on target last night, okay? Forty five percent possession, mm. only two corners. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Manchester City had five shots on target, nineteen shots altogether. Mm. I mean, the point is, what point is are you is, making? My here? point is, is that they were not robbed; they were outplayed. Surely, Adrian. Well, they were outplayed the other night. I was talking about the last Merseyside final in yes. '84 when we no, got but, beat yeah, by uh, yeah, but you said we robbed, threw with Liverpool. Yeah, but you said robbed mm. again, though. Yeah, well, we were robbed oh, against robbed Chelsea. Again. Well, we've had a few, we've had a few of them over the years. We sound like bitter blues now, Mike. Yeah, well, but, we're, uh, well we're, we're not I, bitter blues at all. I mean, Adrian, <laughs> listen, let me put this to you. You're a former professional footballer. This guy in the studio with me has never heard of the principle of smash and grab, right? I mean, what a lot of teams okay. do is soak up the pressure taunt the opposition and then bang, get in there and uh, and score the goal and take the victory away. That is a classic footballing tactic, is it not? Well, it is for teams who are like to play on the counter-attack. You know, I, yes. think, I don't think we can really, really complain over the two legs. I think City just about deserved it. But I think the, the, the biggest problem now, Mike, is how we're going to finish the rest of the season because... Obviously, the pressure is mounting for Roberto. Yep. You know, I, I, every time I turn the radio on or read a newspaper from home, you know, it, it's criticising Roberto. The only thing I will say in his defence mm. is that this team in the last five or six weeks is very close to winning two or three of them games. Exactly. Had we done so, they would be sitting fifth, sixth in the league and everybody would be saying, hey, we've got a chance of making, you know, the top six and getting into Europe. Yes. I know they're all have some butts, but, you know... Th- you look at the decision against Chelsea, which was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that linesman yeah. shouldn't work again in the Premier League for me. No, it's I'm not totally like the agree. ball has travelled a long distance. It's no. in the penalty area. Yeah. It's cost them. It's robbed them. But isn't that, but isn't that, is, the, when, but isn't that swings and roundabouts of football, Adrian? Well, it is. But when you're sitting where Roberto Martinez is at this moment, he's looking for every crumb of comfort he can get. Yeah. And yeah. the problem is, the, the problem is here, that what happens is you suddenly 
lose two more games and suddenly it's eight games that you haven't won and the pressure starts to mount. Mm. You know, it's, we've got all the social media now and it's becoming a really difficult time for him. Yeah. I just hope that we can get this result at the weekend. I, I have every confidence that they can mount another good cup run mm. because this team is a good team. Yeah, oh, no. just, well, trust me, you know, so, well, that's the thing. I mean, it does so appear to be a good team. It's got lots of very good players in it. They can mm. they can score goals at will, but they seem, as as, as Porky said, unable to one to hold on to a lead, mm. and they keep making the same mistake. And that's the definition of madness, isn't it? Well, it is. But what I'm saying to you is, what Roberto is what he is. You know, the, the reason that he, he got the reputation that he did was for his expansive football. He believes in playing through the field. He believes in opening the game up. You know, this is a guy that beat Manchester City with Wigan. You know, when you compare the two clubs, because the yep. guy knows the way he wants to play. Now, all of a sudden, he's having one or two problems holding on to leagues, leads, and he's just grow. It's you know, all the pressure starting to mount by the day. I just hope that now he can sort of mount another FA Cup run and then get a couple of results because I think the the guy deserves a, a little bit of a break at this moment in time. Yeah, no, I I totally agree with you there, Adrian. And the point is that I think we've got such a good team, such a good spine, when you think of, you know, uh, John Stones, when you think of Ross... Uh, hang on, hang Ross on. Barkley. John Stones? Yeah, yeah, and, and who, let me who, finish. Why was he, just, play, well, why was he playing at right finish. back? Why was he playing at right just back? Just let me finish, and Lukaku, because we've got two of the great uh, central defenders, and you say to yourself, what's going to happen, Adrian, is Everton are going to go out against some team soon and thrash them 6-0. Well, this team is capable of. Yes. Yeah, I know. I've been, I've been listening to all the criticism of John Stones. Yes. If John Stones is so bad, why do all the top clubs in the world want to buy him? Exactly. Well, we don't know that, though, do we? We don't know that for sure. Of course we I, do. I do. Of course I we do. do. I know that Barcelona have watched something like the last 15 games that Everton have played, mm. and they aren't looking at anybody else. Yeah. This kid is, this kid is playing like everybody always wants English centre-halves to be, a cultured player from the back. That's right. He's 21 years of age. He's going to make the odd mistake. Yeah. If every time he loses the ball, we're going to start criticising him, do you want us to go back to where we were 25 years ago with yeah. centre-halves who couldn't move? We just kicked the ball down the field. Because that was what we used to get accused well, it, of. Well, surely, well, hang on, Adrian, surely, players, surely it? it depends, does it not? I mean, if, I think you're right. I don't think it's fair if he gets criticised every time he loses the ball. But if he loses the ball uh, in such a way that he causes a penalty, which then ends up losing him the game, then that's a bit of a big error, isn't it? It's an error. And you, mm. you have to learn from your errors. Exactly. Now, if there's any criticism, then you're going to have to say to him, hey, you, you can't make these mistakes regularly. And I don't think he has. He's made a few recently. I only I, I remember must be two months ago. People are talking about him being the best central defender since Rio Ferdinand, and it's probably going to get fifty, a hundred caps for England. Yeah, no, you know. So to, to put all this on his shoulders, I think is really unfair. Yeah, and I just think that we have to take stock of this team is really young. Mm. You sure. know, this is a young side. Sure. Kunis Mori, what is he? Twenty-two. Stones, yeah. twenty-one. McCarthy, Ross Barkley, Lukaku. You know, this yeah. is a young side. Delafeu. Yeah. No, no, absolutely I'm, right. I'm convinced that would mo- most pre- most teams in the Premier League, if you put them five or six young players available, yeah. there'd be a stampede for their signature. Oh, I totally and agree. Coming with young players, and coming with young players, you have a, a period at times where it's a little bit inconsistent. I remember going back to my day when everybody thought Edward Kendall was going to get fired. Yeah, we had the same time. It was the same team. Yes, very young. You're, you're inconsistent. You make mistakes. Mm. Mm. But I, I just, I just hope all the Evertonians can sit back and yeah. just reflect a little bit yeah. and, and let's see where we are at the end of the season. No, I think I think this is a really, but don't really think, good group don't you think of young players. Also, I think you're absolutely right. But don't you think there's mm. a danger as well, Adrian, that if uh, Everton don't finish uh, with a cup at the end of the season and they do finish in the bottom half of the table because they keep making the same mistakes over and over again and they keep not holding on to a lead, that some of those young players who are obviously having their heads turned by some of the interest that's being shown in them, might leave. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. But we have to hope that the common sense prevails. And uh, what well, is, is right. John Stone's going to be better going to Manchester City or wherever and never playing? Yeah. I just think at this moment in time, if I'm named young players, I'm playing for a great club, yeah. I get, I'm playing in a great stadium, I'm playing in the Premier League week in, week out yeah. for a big club. Hey, that time will come. And if they're will. going to move on at 23, 24, mm. then I think that's the right time. Yeah. They, they are foolish to move now and go and languish in somebody's reserve sitting on somebody's bench. I totally agree with you, Adrian. And the other issue is, of course, Everton are doing all this without a billionaire sugar daddy to fund what we're doing. <laughs> the club is a marvellously uh, well-run club. Incredibly well-run club. Yeah. And I think, and, you know, I've said it a million times, my hat goes off to... To yeah, Bill Kenwright, the exactly. chairman. I know he's not everybody's cup of tea. He's mine. But let me tell you, 
Yeah. If, if we haven't got the if we haven't got the billionaire, if we haven't got the shake, I want this guy in charge. Yeah. Not somebody people forget all the people who've been at places like Leeds and Birmingham and yeah. Portsmouth and all these places where they've never really recovered. I'll stick with Bill Kenwright as long as we've got him and if yeah. we get a shake or a billionaire somewhere come along, then maybe I think Bill would be the first one to say no, he would. He he would. Would. Well, You wouldn't turn one away, though, would you? Well, of course you wouldn't, because Mr Kenwright's been looking for one for the last ten years. Keep well, up, you, know, you everybody idiots. Knows, everybody knows where they are. Well, I'm telling you, we've been looking for a... Yeah, but you see, some clubs, uh, and we've talked about this before, Adrian, some clubs just sell out to the first joker who comes along. That's why Leeds are what yeah. are the state they're in. Portsmouth in the state they're in. Nottingham Forest, the state they're in. Calm but down. Everton are still mighty. <laughs> Adrian, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us at this very sad time. Nope. Adrian yeah. Heath, uh, yeah. very, very uh, yeah. top man, uh, yeah. slightly able to put things in, a, in the same perspective as you, but mm-hmm. with, with slightly less bile, mm. uh, which is always nice. Mm. A couple of tweets to read out to you. Uh, Martin says, I'd love to explain Martinez's thinking, taking Della Fowl off, giving us no width and putting Kone on. Unbelievable. Well, it's because I think Kone and Lukaku do have a wonderful partnership together. They can operate brilliantly. One of our best performances well, of the season, Mike, was at Southampton. Well, they didn't operate brilliantly last night. Where we won 3-0, and the combination of uh, Kone and Lukaku on yeah. that day was outstanding. Everybody thought that they well, would... They didn't do very well last night, though, did they? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Why do you always make a statement of the opposite? Because you're too thick to say anything else. I'm just trying to point too out... Too thick the... to have any I'm breadth of thought. I'm just trying to point thought. out the facts, that's all. Yeah, well, you know, the facts I know... What I would appreciate is a bit of wider thinking. I'm giving you that. Uh, as well. You know, a bit of but blue sky thinking. You just keep being offensive. A bit of blue sky thinking, you know. You just keep being offensive. Instead that's of all. All, instead of, you know, stating the obvious, just to try and wind me up. I will not be wound up. Stop Dignity. talking. It's time for the news at two o'clock. On digital radio and ten eighty nine and ten fifty three AM Talk Sport. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. We've got lots of tennis action coming up. Uh, we've got Joanna Conta- Conti coming up a little mm. bit later on. Now, I've got something that will cheer you up, Mr. Powell. Oh, yes. Uh, this is from Phil in Hertfordshire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's texted into 81089. Mm-hmm. He says, For the first time ever, I'm texting in to support Mr. Parry. Thank you. His team had a one goal lead before the second leg and are a decent, if arguably underperforming outfit. So he had every right to be taking talking his team up mm. ahead of the game. Perhaps exactly. he was a little blind to the threats Manchester City would bring, but it's not mm. like City are unbeatable mm. this season. Mm. And there's nothing worse than a supporter who's always belly aching and negative before any game that matters. Better to be a disappointed optimist than a wizened old pessimist. Yes, I, I do, agree. however, think there are some serious questions regarding Roberto's capacity to field a properly drilled defence, mm. and I'm not sure it's something that he has the capability to address. Yes. Let's face it, it's hardly a newly discovered Achilles heel. Well, exactly, and, uh, you know, I hate So there's people some people repetitive. giving you some, uh, some words no, of uh, comfort. A very good one here from a guy called the Jerry Mandra, and he's got you the down... The Mandra. Yeah, he's got you down so to So you tea. think this guy's... A a genuine character. Yeah, he, he, he says, in my view, it's clearly just talk sport employees who are, quote, ringing up uh, on the two mics. That's to, a terrible slur. Uh, to, to, to hammer that Mike Parry uh, and supporting IROMG. Uh, the texts are being made up as well. That is obvious. Not it's true. just so MG can put the boot into Not Mike true. Parry. And I have to say that one long term supporter, and that's Liz, right? has sent a couple of very supportive texts, which you, of course, have ignored completely. I haven't seen anything from Liz. So I will just read out the last one. I think it's really unfair... Um, um, she says, you never read out the nice tweets, and I've sent some I've nice just read ones one out now. about Mike. I've no, just read one out not now. Not one of hers, right? He deserves a bit more respect. That's what she's saying, OK? And she's absolutely right. So, so you just... deserve respect, despite the yes. fact that you earlier on Hawksby and Jacobs threatened physically uh, to, 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 to harm me if uh, for some reason I wound you up. That was satirical. Oh, was it? That was satirical. OK, what about the putting me uh, into boiling oil? Well, you know, that was uh, that was uh, descriptive. That oh, was okay. descriptive. I mean, that's uh, that's because uh, you started to get me angry because you wouldn't get off the subject, and in fact, you were becoming rather abusive yourself. Not at all. And wallowing. It's not my way. Wallowing in my misery. It is not my and way. And anybody who wallows in somebody else's misery is, in my view, a louse. Yes. Well, that's, because, that's certainly something you would never because, do. Because because you see, what it means is that you have so many shortcomings as an individual yourself, so many shortcomings mm. that you are a you know just an inadequate, and so. Well, you've Read you another one out. You've got uh, nothing in, in to boast about you. in your own life, let's, so let's, you try. You try to well, take boast. comfort in it's my not, misery. Not, my boasting is not my way. Your problem is, is that you go around boasting all the time, I don't boast and then when it all goes horribly wrong, you don't like it. Neil says this: Porky, mm. I salute your undying passion for Everton. Mm. Always keep the faith. Okay. And he's Neil the baggy. Now I will tell you what I'll do. 
Uh, we'll stop talking about Everton. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Uh, however, yeah. there is yeah. a call from an Everton supporter, and I want to get uh, the te- test the temperature. Let me just check first of all whether Jed, uh, who's called in from Tamworth mm. Mm. in Staffordshire, is or is not a Talksport employee. Jed, are you a Talksport employee? Not at the moment. No. Thank no, you very okay. much indeed. What would you like to say? I just I despair at where Everton are at the moment. Why? Why? I mean, the mine as you know, Europe. What, what was it? The, Champions League in three seasons, and we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're a point above West Brom. Yeah, but what do you think the of our team, Jed? The Everton team in ten years, and we're a point above West Brom. Yeah, well, there's nothing please. wrong with, with being West Brom. Don't, you know, don't uh, denigrate West Brom. The point is, Jed, we've got a team full of fantastic footballers. They will click, they will come together, and I'm telling you, they will blow the socks off a lot of the world, and that's all you need to know. I mean, if you're saying, oh, it's terrible, get rid of Martinez, who do you want as the Everton manager in his place? I'll just put anyone, anyone oh, from the lower ridiculous. league, anyone who can actually organise a back four to hold on to a 2 0 lead. Don't, don't That's be so all ridiculous. We need at the anyone, moment. anyone. Anyone who can hold on to a 2 0 lead. You, you can't have an anyone, mate, running a club like Everton. It just doesn't work like that. You know, you can't drag somebody in off the street. We've got a great manager. He's going to prove that, believe me. Have faith. Have faith, boy. Are you, are you worried, Jed? What do you mean, boy? Yeah. How old are you, Jed? I'm. <laughs> 56. Yeah, 56. well, there you go, you see. I don't think you call him boy. You should, did you hear Adrian Heath a few minutes ago? Adrian Heath said, look, it was just like this in Howard Kendall's early days. And then the, the team grew, matured, knitted together, uh, got a bit older and suddenly became world beaters, literally world beaters. And that's what's going to happen this time, hey, believe me. that team is gone in the summer. Three months' time, that team is gone. What do you mean Are by you that? Are you seriously saying that we're going to hang on to Lukaku and Stones? Well, the way you Stones is playing those, at the moment... You, you, you seriously think they're going to be there in six months' time? Oh, Lukaku will be there without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, you yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. And, and John Stones will be there unless somebody offers £80 million. Pounds. And if somebody offers £80 million, pounds, oh, then, of God. course, you let him go because every club is a selling right. club. Oh. There's nothing... Not that's, what, that's what they want for Hazard at Chelsea. Yeah, well... I'm, I don't I, think they're going to get that for Stones. John Stones will get into that sort of category. Um, how did you become an Everton fan and live in Tamworth, Jed? Yeah, how about this, uh, Jed? Where are your parents from? Uh, 1968. The first game I ever seen on the television, Everton West Brom. 1-0, Jeff Astle. Yeah, said to my brother, which team do you want? He said West Brom. Yeah. I said Everton. OK. Yeah. Good man. Well, I mean, you keep the faith, Joe, but don't get despairing like this, right? We're Evertonians, and we, we look up, you know, we look up and, and, and we, we stand straight, we, you know, we ride high, we shoot straight, don't worry about all of the, the garbage, okay. all the garbage only, that surrounds you. the best is good. And I, was, I was there in the 80s, and I've seen the best. Yeah, I know, and I'm I telling did. you, this is rubbish. And one last That's thing. terrible tour. You, if Ken Wright, right, I will yeah. respect that man mm. if... When he walks away, he just takes away the amount of money he put into the club. If he walks away with 160 million quid in his mm. pocket, yeah. no respect at all. If he just leaves the, the amount of money, what, mm. 20 million quid he put in, if he takes mm. that out and walks away, mm. and sticks the rest of it into a new stadium, mm. every respect for the man. That's, if he uh... doesn't... Sure. Well, that's 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 Mr. Kenwright's situation. Well, that's the reason why he shouldn't make money going well, into a business. He rescued the club from yeah. oblivion and, right. and put them back onto an even keel. And without him, I don't know, God knows where we'd be today. He might be in the third division or whatever. So I say Mr. Kenwright is perfectly entitled to sort out his business affairs as he wants. I think he's the greatest Evertonian that uh, that we've ever had because you know. Dixie Dean was the greatest goal scorer. Mr Kenwright, I thought, pulled the, t- the club together in the time of crisis. But anyway, I would say that, wouldn't I? He is a friend of mine. No, and, indeed. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm proud to say that. Indeed you would. Now, Steve mm. uh, has sent a tweet in saying, maybe we should play this during the breaks. Dignity by Deacon Blue. Mm. I think maybe we should have that coming out in the next break. Well, dignity is the, you know, you're being, being so it dignified. is the catchword of tonight's I'm show. Shocked. I'm absolutely And it's shocked. me who's being dignified, and you being loud-mouthed, explosive, um, pernicious... Uh, overbearing, boorish, and frankly, just revolting. How about this from Rob? If Lukaku tried to put his head in a vat of boiling oil, he'd end up missing the vat and falling over. What a ridiculous, <laughs> uh, ridiculous statement, considering that look, 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 no, cuckoo. La Cuckoo's um, performances this season have been so good. Yeah, but only in games that don't matter. 
That's the point. Oh, I'm sorry. So when you when you in games suddenly... of big the big games that matter, yeah. he's not doing it. So That's two thirds two thirds of the games have been played this season. Yeah. Lukaku is the second highest scorer in the Premier League. Well, so he must have right. played some games that matter, mustn't he? No, because you if, if because head. if you were the second highest scorer in the Premier brain. League, if you were the second highest scorer in the Premier League, yeah. you would expect to have your team mm. a bit higher up the league yeah. than where Everton currently are, which well, is twelfth, well, eight the, points away from relegation, which that, tells me that he yeah. scores an awful lot of goals that don't matter. That's the anomalies of professional football. Yeah. Something you don't know about. Now, one final one mm-hmm. on this because we will close off the Everton. Uh, saga because it's depressing and I'm well, sorry and I'm it's terribly depressing sorry listening to you you're warbling upset. on about and this is garbage. from uh, this is from Danny in Birkenhead he says people from Birkenhead support Tranmere Rovers not that joke of a club Everton um, I'll tell you how many people supported Tranmere Rovers last time they played a home game it's about 1,300 very so harsh. I think you'll find there are a few people from the Wirral and Birkenhead. What's this guy's name? Uh, his name is Danny. Danny, who uh, who are Everton and possibly Liverpool supporters. Right. Mm-mm. Thank you very much indeed. Have yep. you seen the time? Uh, I don't care about the time because I'm just glad that you have now decided to <laughs> shut your fat, <laughs> gonorrheal mouth and That's stop very talking harsh. about you know things you don't know anything about. Very okay? harsh. As long as dignity is the watchword, uh, we'll all be fine. Dignity is the w- this watchword. This is talk Dignity, sport. dignity. Yes, I can absolutely confirm. You do have a win on here for one, two, three, four, five, six, six zeros after the number one, which tells me it's for one million pounds. Right. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. You're a millionaire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guaranteed millionaire in every lotto draw and a chance to win the jackpot. Thanks to Mrs. Galbraith, Noel Edmonds didn't win. Anyone can win with lotto. Please, don't let it be Noel. Games, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. The new BMW 118i M Sport 5-door sports hatch. Monthly rentals from £259 per month. Pure BMW. £4,199 initial rental. 36-month hire agreement from BMW Financial Services. Subject to status and availability for new vehicles ordered by 31st of March and registered by 30th of June 2016. UK only. Guarantees may be required. Mileage and other conditions apply when you return the vehicle. Hurry, Monday is your last chance to get great savings on many sofas in the best ever DFS winter sale. Be lovely. In the details, very often, is the beauty. When all these little things come together, it's the ultimate feeling of completeness. The Volvo V40R design with adaptive digital display, illuminated gear shift and 17-inch diamond-cut alloys. Now from just 259 a month, including maintenance, with Volvo car leasing, with an initial rental of £259. Four-year personal contract hire agreement. Offer ends March 31st. Subject to status. Mileage and return conditions apply. Rental includes optional maintenance covering routine servicing, tyres, replacement parts and repair due to fair wear and tear. Visit volvocars.co.uk for more details. Book a test drive today at your nearest Volvo showroom. The Volvo V40R design. Life is in the details. I check the fixtures online. I order my pizza online. And when I want to check my sexual health, I can do that online too. The Confidant Home Test accurately checks for 10 main infections at the same time. From a single sample, it's fast, discreet, and it's 100% confidential. Order your Confidant Home SDI test kit online at confidanttest.com. Results are not intended to replace medical advice and should be used as a convenient way of getting tested before consulting a GP. Age 16 plus. UK customers only. Terms and fees apply. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. A terrific performance. Turn of pace and eye for goal. Shout about it. Talk sport. I'm telling a story in a faraway scene, sipping down bracky and reading men on keys, and I'm thinking about a home and all that that means, and a place in the winter for dignity. Quite a nice song, that you have to say. What song is that? Dignity by Deacon Blue. Deacon Scottish Blue? Band. Who are Deacon Blue? They're a Scottish band. And how long have they been around? Oh, uh, well, they've been around for years. Right, years so, and years and so years. they've never really made it then. Oh, yeah, well, Dignity was a huge hit. 
What? That's a huge hit, though. I've never heard of Deacon Blue or Dignity. You've never heard of either no. of them? No. And well, I, doesn't I keep, surprise me. I keep an eye on the pop charts. I'm, I'm, not, sure. A few I'm, years. Not, sure. I'm not sure they put out a Greatest uh, Hits album. How many years do you mean? Well, I would imagine Dignity must be at least 20 years old. 20 years if old? If not longer. As long as to do with me. Listen, I want to talk to you about the fact that you seem to be under a bit of stress, right? Stress? Yes, you do. Not I'm, at I'm, all. I, while I'm dignified, you're getting stressed out because your ridiculous attempts to try and belittle me tonight and, yeah. and to make me feel awkward not after Everton's defeat is not working. No, I'm simply responding it's to some working. of the things that you spouted on an earlier radio show on Talk Sport. Anyway. When you once again, uh, you know, decided to get yourself on the airwaves. I mean, how many times a day can you be on the airwaves? I mean, you were on the breakfast show, yes. right, doing the paper review. Yes. You were on Hawksby and Jacobs bumming up Everton. Yes. Uh, you were on the show with me last night. You were yes. on another show with me tonight. Yes. So in the space of 24 hours... You've been on Talk Sport four times. Yes. So you think that's normal? Well, I think I think it's symptomatic of the fact that I have, um, you know, a specific role here, and part of that specific role is to talking head. Be able, no, be able to elucidate on situations which are current. Yeah. Now listen, but you, you were don't... also on the warm up on Sunday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Talking yeah. rubbish about Everton. Well, that was a, that was a current uh, situation. That yeah. was because Everton were playing on Sunday. Yeah. Now, listen, you don't get stressed out often enough. Do you know that? Um, I, d- I do actually get stressed no, out. No, you, you don't. just don't see it very no, often. No, 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 you're just too laid back, and that's why life passes you by a lot. But listen, if you did, mm. you know when you do get stressed out, do you find yourself literally walking round in circles? Uh, well, so, when, I used to, you know, when I used to be in newspapers, I used to spend a lot of time on the phone. Yeah. And I used to spend time... I could never sit down when I was on the phone. Yeah. And I used to walk around in circles on the phone. Yeah. Shouting at people. Right. Oh, well, I used you, to quite you enjoy be doing it. that. But you know, that, oh, I'm, what I'm talking about here is, is, a, is a proper scientific study. What, you mean like walking around in circles for no reason? Yeah, you do. No. What happens no, is I don't if, do if that. you feel anxiety and stress, this comes from a report mm. uh, written from the School of Psychology at the University of Kent oh, yeah. uh, by a guy called Dr. Mario Welk. Uh, well, Welk? Welk, yeah, honestly. <laughs> w E L. No, uh, is it uh, Wake? W E I C K. W E I C K, yeah. Vike. Vike, yeah, Dr. Mario Vike, that's Vike. it, yeah. And what happens is, if you're stressed out, you uh, when you're walking, you veer to the left as though you're drunk. Really? Yeah, seriously, and you well, hit walls. I mean, I've never, no, I've never been that stressed out. No. I mean, I never get to the point where I can't control myself. The brain has two hemispheres, right and left, and when you get stressed out, you, the right side of your brain gets overactive and uh-huh. it makes you walk to the left. OK. And that's it, that honestly. Has that ever happened to you? What? Has that ever happened to you? Well, I'm not aware of it, but it, it, this research was published in a journal called Cognition, uh-huh. and that's one of the journals that I read, one right. of the medical journals, OK? Yeah. And the brain's two hemispheres are associated with different motivational systems. Right. Experiencing anxiety and inhibition uh, have more activity in the right-hand side of the brain, which causes people to walk in a leftward trajectory. So, you know, when you take your hands off the wheel of your car yeah. when you're driving down the motorway or something like that? I don't do that. No, I don't either. But if you did... Why would you do that? Well, I'm just giving you an analogy. You know, the only time I would ever do that is yeah. to test whether or not the car's going in a straight well, line. Well, that's what I mean. If the wheels are aligned yeah. or something like that, and yeah. then it drifts to the left or yeah. the right, that's what happens to you when you're stressed out, except you drift to the left and you could hit walls, OK? Uh-huh. Right. It's, it's well, true. Well, that's never happened to me. I've never seen that happen to anybody else either. The, the area of the brain responsible, right, because yeah. I've, I've found this out, and, and it interferes with the magnetic resonance and the neuroimaging, right, is right in the middle of the brain there, and it yeah. affects either right or left, depending how stressed out you're getting. Uh-huh. OK? Right. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, you see, you've I'm got not to sure watch I that. believe it. I'm not sure about no, this no, guy, no, Dr. No, Vike. No, no, it's I've never true. heard of him either. It's true. Yeah. Now, I've got something else to tell you, actually, and that is that... Um, now, when you get stressed out, you do daft things, OK? Mm, right. And sometimes you mix that with drink and you're in real trouble. Well, being stressed out and drinking too much is definitely a recipe for disaster. Right, particularly if you've got a mobile phone in your hand. Yeah. So guess what? A new app has been developed mm. which you can attach to your phone, right. which means you can't How send... Do you, what do you mean you attach it to your phone? Well, you know, you put it on your phone. Well, you download it, you mean? Download it, right. that's right, yeah. You've got to attach it. Well, you know what I'm talking about. hanging off. And what happens is um, you cannot send nasty messages to people I don't when, send when, nasty when, when to you're people. intoxicated. But I don't do you that. You just said you did. You just said it's a recipe for disaster. No, I said it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. I did not say anything about messages. Well, well what, what else do you think is a recipe? I said being stressed out and drinking heavily yes. is a recipe for disaster. It's bad for your health. No, it's, it's when you've got a mobile your phone in your hand, it's even worse. Well, I'm not talking about that. You often send out um, fiery tweets when you've been drinking. Fiery? Yeah, I've seen them on a no, Saturday night. Absolutely yes, you do. Not. Yes, you do. No. Anything. I get involved occasionally in yeah. the odd spat with people on Twitter. Exactly. Nothing to do with whether I've been drinking or anyway, not. Anyway, anyway. Depends on what mood I'm in. You can now get an app which can stop you doing this, OK? Oh, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's specifically designed 
to deal with um, uh, developed uh, this disparity. Katie with... Is this the one that you can recall stuff on? Yes. Drunken customers aged 17 to 26. A market thought to number more than 100 million people around the, row, uh, the world. It's uh, OK. And a, it's done in the University of Virginia. And what University they do of Virginia? Is, yeah, Virginia. In America. Yeah, well, where do you think Virginia is? Well, I'm just making sure the University of Virginia is the one you're talking well, about. Where do you in, think it is? Well, I think it's in, in America. It's the exactly. Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah, it is, yeah. But I just want to make yeah. sure it's not some ertzatz no, University of Virginia. No, no, The chief executive of Drunk Mode, right? Yeah. Uh, was div- uh, uh, this guy, what's his name? Uh, Joshua Anton, yeah. uh, who was a graduate of the University of Virginia, where he developed Drunk Mode, so right. he's now become the chief executive at a very young age, uh-huh. and it manages a stable of smartphone applications... You should get it. ..for intoxicated customers. Uh, the first creation was an app that discourages drinkers from texting and calling friends while intoxicated by forcing them to solve a mathematical problem what? to activate their phone. Really? Yeah. Yeah, how about well, that? Yeah, but that wouldn't work, would it? Yeah. Would oh, that work for you? I don't know. Well, well, I mean, if you decided you were annoyed and you want to ring somebody, right? Well, I don't do it when I'm annoyed. Well, OK, but if you yeah, were, yeah. No, no, and no, if I, you I'm... did... If, just imagine that you did, OK? Well, I'm massively disciplined, actually. Are you? I don't do that. Well, thank God for that. Yeah. But imagine if you were not massively disciplined yes, and yes. you wanted to ring somebody up and give them a piece yes, of your mind yes. and you saw that there was some ridiculous locked device yes. and making it impossible for you to make the call, yeah. you'd just throw the phone, wouldn't you? Well, no, I wouldn't, no. Other, app, other apps force the user to play a game that's evaluating the dexterity of their brain. Oh, you yeah. see what I mean? Right. So if you, if you can play this game and, and, and get the answer then you're all right to, to send your message. Yeah. If you can't, you shouldn't. It's called Drunk Text Saviour. How do they know you want, to call, you want to send a nasty message? What if you just want to call a cab? Well, no, but you... you well, how do they know? Well, because you've got to illustrate through these tests that you have to do whether you're so being rational. So what you're saying is, is that this, this thing comes on at night yeah. because you ask it Absolutely. to come on. Absolutely. So even if you're not drunk, it could be on there. Absolutely. Well, That's that would right. be ridiculous. No, it's not. Well, I mean, what if you're just coming out of a pub and you want to call a cab yeah. and you get this ridiculous puzzle? Well, you've got to, you've got to get through the puzzle and get the answer oh, and then you can use the that. phone. No. Now, this guy called Ronnie... Sounds like a stupid idea. This, 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 well, I think you should hear it out before you start branding things stupid, the mood you're in. Right, Ronnie... Mm-hmm. Rocher, who's 29, yeah. and he comes from Texas. Right. He invented Drunk Text Saviour, right? Right. And he sends users a warning if their text is filled with a misspelling or expletives. Right. So what it does is it actually bars yeah. bad, you know, bad vibes uh-huh. going off your phone. You yeah. see what I mean? Well, you can send a nasty text to somebody without spelling it wrongly or using an expletive. No, no, the you point can. is... No, what this app can do is it can detect whether it's an aggressive message. You see what I mean? Well, yeah, but if it's only... If it's and aggressive, ask you to check it. Well, how can it... But what if but an aggressive message could be any number of things, surely? Well, it says here... Um, it, it can pick up whether you've created, um, sorry, whether you've, you've created an explicit text to a boss giving voice to the feeling that he was underpaid and under that you are underpaid and underappreciated. Yeah. The problem is Apple doesn't let you intercept text messages, he said. Apps stopping a drunk user from sending texts can only be used after a warning, like a friend placing your hand on a shoulder yeah. and saying, right. are you sure you want to send this? Yeah. This is very interesting, no, it isn't like it? sounds like a nanny state to me. Well, I think it's good, I think it's good. Why wouldn't it, wouldn't it be simpler if they just sort of said, why don't you block out certain numbers so you can't get in touch with certain people that you might regret talking to at certain points of the night? How about this? A guy in New Jersey... Or how about you don't listen to anything I say? Well, because I'm going to answer that. Now, on, a, guy, a guy in New Jersey has gone even further. Uh-huh. He has invented an app which actually provides a breathalyser device connected to the phone oh, yeah. uh, via Bluetooth, <laughs> OK? Yeah. Right. And and, uh, and what you have to do is you have to pass your, the breathalyser test before you can uh, actually get onto you know, the phone. Do you know what I saw the other day, actually, speaking what? of breathalysers? Uh, I can't remember where I was. I think it was in Halfords, I think right. I saw it. And they've got these uh, little boxes of breathalyser, little mini breathalyser kits really? seeing, being sold in Halfords. And next to it was mm. a sign that said... Please be aware that if you're driving in France, yes. it is now compulsory to carry one of these in your car. And if you don't have one, you can be fined. Really? So if you go... Because you know they used to say that you have to have a, you have to have a triangle. That's right, a red triangle, Which yeah. you now have to have here as well. Yes. Now, apparently, if you're going to drive in France, you have to have a little mini breathalyser kit. Why? Well, because Why do you want to breathalyse yourself? Well, to make sure that you're not over the limit. Well, just don't drive when you're in France. Don't get on the wine and then get into your Citroen and start burning around on their... Uh, what do they call the roads in France? Well, the uh, auto-routes. Auto-routes or yeah. whatever, yeah. No, it's 
wouldn't do it, should you? Well, no, the point Ridiculous. is, that, you know, but if, you, if you're even stopped as you're going through France Stupid and you don't rule. have a, a little mini I breathalyzer mean, that, that kit, is, that is you clearly, get fined. That's somebody who's been sitting in, uh, in an office in Brussels somewhere thinking of something stupid to mm. invent to uh, have a new rule Could on well be. drivers. Could well be. Now, Idiotic. coming up, we're going to find out what's going on down in China. Good. You know, the heart of the economic... Uh, well, you know what is going on in China. What is? They're, they're, they're uh, transplanting heads off monkeys onto other monkeys. And they'll be doing it... To, they'll, be, they'll be putting monkeys' heads on humans soon. No, I've, I've, oh, I have. I could think of a good, uh, a I know good, all candid- about a good candidate for one of those. Oh, I see. Uh, this is Talk Sport. Talk Sport. And it's in! A diving header at the end of a 50-yard run. From the root to the tip. Talk Sport. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Coming up, of course, uh, a little bit later on, it is Porky Vision, uh, the greatest TV review this side of Pyongyang. Yep. Uh, and funnily enough, by coincidence, we're going over to uh, to that part of the world. I know we that's probably are. a bit loose in a geographical sense. But mm. Peter Smith is our man in Beijing. We're going to find out how life is for him down there. Peter, very good morning to you. Yes, good morning from sunny Beijing. Hello yes. there. Oh, what, has the smog finally cleared? <laughs> it's all relative uh, mm. here in China, Mike, so it's relatively OK today. I can just about make out the sun. Excellent. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, we haven't spoken to you for a while, Peter, because you've been here a few times and, and you've been travelling yeah. around a little bit. I mean, obviously, since the last time we spoke, I suppose one of the major stories that has dominated not just the financial pages, but, but the front pages mm. of the newspapers here is, is the sort of state of China's economy. Is there any sense when you're there that things are not quite what they used to be? Um, well, not really. You don't really notice it too much day to day, I would say, uh, on the streets. I mean, uh, we would probably, uh, I think back in the UK, definitely notice things like that by perhaps boarded up shop fronts and, uh, you know, possibly uh, uh, showing that the economy wasn't as, as strong as it used to be. But you don't really see that in China. It always has the, an air of uh, an extremely uh, busy place where there's lots going on, doesn't really seem to be affected. So on a day to day level, I would say no. But I mean, I think that it, this tends to receive a lot more coverage, it has to be said, in the Western media than it does to the ordinary Chinese person. There is an element that they don't tend to talk about it as uh, as much. But that might start to change, possibly, if the, uh, some of the indicators you know we hear are correct. So. Well, the thing is, Pete, um, when you look at it, it, it's ludicrous for people to start panicking about the Chinese economy. I think the growth rate per quarter is down to 7%. I mean, any, <laughs> Euro, any European country that was getting, or any Western country, including America, was getting growth of 7% a quarter would be in boom time and boom land. So it's all relative, isn't it? Yes, it is all relative, but I think there's some, some concerns there, might really, because... One of the things is, can these figures really wholly be, be trusted that come out from uh, yeah. uh, from Beijing? I mean, we're 6.9, I believe, is the latest figure, but a lot of people are uh, really indicators w- w- going off different ways of measuring the economy and mm. looking more about a figure of about 3.5 or 4%. Mm. Now, again, if that was in the UK, that would be fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Still, but uh, China really is on a promise. The government really is on a promise here to to uh, keep increasing um, growth and keep increasing living standards uh, in the country. Yeah. Uh, the overlays here are so so far so far gone. This country that really just one drop in, in the economy, slight drops, could lead to you know big uh, big job losses mm. and uh, a lot of uncertainty. So uh, yes, it is you know it is a bit more unstable, but the uncertainty are certainly, you know, difficult here. So sure. it, it, it's tough, yeah. Yeah. Pete, the other thing is that I read things about China sometimes and I'm just staggered. There are apparently yeah. about half a dozen cities in China with more than 10 or even 20 million people in them, which we in the West have never heard of, and they resemble, building-wise, Shanghai. I mean, <laughs> you know... the. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, the, the names of cities I can't even pronounce and all this sort of thing. It's such a vast, no. uh, you know, developing country. Yeah, everything, like I said earlier, is, is relative yeah. uh, in my, when it comes to size and scale. I mean, my wife is from, uh, she keeps talking about her very small village that mm. she comes from yeah. in Hernan province. This is where we got married. So mm. when I went there for the 
first time. I was expecting some sort of uh, sleepy hollow. Yes. Um, not a, a a place where uh, uh, 5,000, 6,000 people live. Yeah. And that's, that that amounted to her as a small village. Right. Whereas so as, as that would be a small town, wouldn't yeah. it? So yeah, sure. So everything really is on a different scale here, mm. yeah. Yeah, no, it is completely on a different scale. But, I mean, with, with the break... I mean, I suppose with the slowdown in the economy there, I mean, it's having more... And maybe the reason it's having uh, such such a big effect here and mm. being written about so much more here is because of the uh, the, the sort of knock-on effect on property oh, and absolutely. on companies and on stock markets and all of that. I mean, certainly stock market figures uh, have been terrible in China lately, haven't they? Does, does anybody worry about that? Uh, well, uh, if I go by the man on the street or even like uh, my wife as well, they don't mm. tend to worry too much about this. I think one of the reasons for this is uh, the common person on the street doesn't really have too much invested in the stock market. No. It really is a very limited uh, portion. And the actual – the overall uh, sense that the economy is – a very important thing to, the, thing to their, their lives is not something which is so ingrained here in China mm. as it would be back in uh, in the UK. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I, no, the people on the street don't talk about it, but certainly a lot of people, uh, foreign investors, a lot of people as well, um, with business interests all over the world uh, are very concerned about what is actually happening with the economy here on, yeah. a, on a grander scale. Yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure it won't be the last we'll hear of that story. Now, um, Pete, I think we've managed to um, signpost this to you. I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, <laughs> the experiments taking place on transplanting monkeys' heads from one monkey yeah. to another. Are you sure now, about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now I'm sorry, I know this is not, uh, you know, something you may be an expert on, <laughs> But ne- All right. nevertheless, I wonder whether it is of, uh, you know, world importance because, you know, if you start transplanting heads on monkeys, then very, very soon people will say, well, that's only a precursor tra- to transplanting heads <laughs> on people. So, Why is it? So, how, sorry? How is it a precursor to that? Well, because if you... You might as well say, you know, experimenting on lab rats is a precursor to experimenting on humans. Well, hang on. We sent the first the first living being that went into space was a monkey. Yes. It was followed very closely by a it man. It was a dog as well, wasn't it? Yeah, and a dog as well. Yeah. So, so what's the news on this one, please, Pete? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Mike, yeah, there have been these, uh, these experiments that have been going on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Harbin, which is up in the north of China. Yes. The university there. Um, now, the chap, the chap has been involved in this. The, the main person is, has been labelled as a... <laughs> you always know there's a problem when someone's labelled a maverick. A maverick? Um, I chap, thought you were going to say mad chap, scientist. Yeah, there, so did I. Yeah, he's, he's a maverick surgeon. Uh, this chap called Mr Canavero. I don't think he's in any way related to uh, Chelsea. Uh, former uh, no. <laughs> physio. No, but, that's right. Uh, well, he might he, be. He, yeah. Yeah. he could be. You never know. But he's been he's been out here doing uh, experimentation on uh, on animals, of course, first mm. uh, monkeys and mice. And of course, one of the reasons for that is this sort of experimentation mm. under ethical for ethical reasons is not yet mm. um, fully uh, allowed uh, back in, say, for example, European Union or America. Yeah. So China really ha- does have. Uh, um, a bit more flexibility with rather lax uh, legislation as to how far you can actually go here regarding these sort of uh, this sort of stuff. But yeah, apparently, uh, according mm. to to him, uh, he's worked on the animals and he's getting ready for um, mm. he's getting ready for a well, full uh, you know, like human sort of, uh, like, head yeah, transplant. Like something out of Doctor Moreau. Isn't well, it? I mean, the thing is, the thing is, Pete, you live in China, and and I mm. I know that the rules and regulations there are, as you say, lax. But in mm. Europe, it wouldn't take kindly to transplanting monkeys' heads onto humans, despite the fact, <laughs> despite the fact that Peter Reid, a very well-known uh, football <laughs> manager in this country, is always greeted by opposition fans with the chant, "Peter Reid's got a monkey's head." But he's, I mean, well, he well, wouldn't yeah. need one, would he? No, he hasn't no, really. No, no, but I mean, he wouldn't need one. Bolton, as a diehard Bolton Wanderers fan, as if I don't have enough to be upset about at the moment, yeah. you're insulting one of my all-time heroes. There. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, well, he came from your club to mine, by the way, for sixty thousand. Pounds, yes. so thank you very I know, much. You got a steal mm. there. You did. We did. We but, did. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I, I think I think the thing is with this is that uh, this Mr. Canavaro, okay, for, for right or wrong, but what yeah. he's saying is that. He, this will actually have benefits towards the humankind in the end because yeah. uh, there are. When you think about it, when mm. if somebody has, uh, as he says himself, if somebody's had a very bad uh, road accident or something and is paralysed yeah. their entire body, mm. now if it were possible to transplant yeah. that head onto another mm-hmm. human well, body, well, then that would. Head. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, well, well right. yeah, but hang on yes, a second. I mean, if you if you had a bad car accident, mm. right? 
and uh, yeah. you know they they weren't able to communicate with you in some way. Yeah. And you they, woke up with a monkey's head on. You woke up with a monkey's head on. I don't think you'd be yeah. too happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Thinking, I'm thinking the insurance claim yeah. as well. <laughs> You'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, actually, actually. OK, OK. I think from what I understand has been yeah. going up in, in Harbin, I think the, the actual results of this are to actually find a way mm. where they can actually have real benefits for... Uh, for humankind in the end. So, for example, say there was a damaged body, yeah. you could put a fully functional head on top of it if mm. you managed to find a donor. But uh, yeah. that's. But of course, the only way they can actually do this is to experiment through the animals, first of all. Oh, and, uh, absolutely. Um, actually, and Pete, so. while we've been talking to you, I've just looked up um, the gentleman Cannavaro you've been talking about. Sergio yeah. Cannavaro, right. Apparently, it says here he's an Italian scientist who proudly compares himself to Marco Polo oh, yeah. and Dr. Yeah. Frankenstein. <laughs> now, why, yeah. Yeah. Why, why, I don't know what the connection is between Marco Polo and Dr. Well, Frankenstein, frankly. He's obviously confusing fact with fiction, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, well, I, think, yeah. I mean, Marco Polo, of course, discovering uh, China, and of course, but I think, you know, he, he's just yeah. uh, trying to make a bit of a, a name for himself. But we've got to remember as well, there's yeah. money in China. There's yeah. money for this kind of stuff. He's, he's, and he says here, I've got one quote from him. He says, I want to spark a space race between China and the rest of the world to perform the first human head transplant. Mm. So he's very ambitious, this <laughs> maybe, boy. Maybe he should do one on himself first. Peter, thank you, as yeah. ever, for uh, Pete, spending the time with so us. Much. What a bizarre story. Mm. Uh, we'll talk some more about that coming up. However, uh, we're about to get underway with Serena Williams against uh, uh, Agnieszka Radvanska. Mm. Uh, so let's talk to Lisa O'Sullivan and find out what to expect. Lisa. Yes, and it is uh, Serena Williams who has to be the hot favourite going into this one of course the six time champion a record six championship titles in Australia 21 Grand Slam titles to her name and all aglow in a vibrant yellow today she hasn't dropped a set on her way to the last four the Polish player Radvanska has been playing very well in this tournament and she is a tricky player to beat she's currently on a 13 match unbeaten streak but she is going to have to find something special to counter the power of Serena Williams coming up around about half past four we should see Joe Conter take on Angelique Kerber, uh, looking to book a place in the final. If she does, she'd become the first British woman to do that since 1977. And I should say that Jamie Murray's through to his third straight Grand Slam men's doubles final after his win with his partner Bruno Soares in the uh, semi-final today. And also another Scott through. Uh, Gordon Reid has scored the biggest win of his career and he's into the semi-final of the wheelchair tennis in the Australian Open. He beat the eight-time champion Shino Conado to go through and is looking to improve on that performance. If you fancy a flutter on the football, a gamble on the golf, a double on the darts, or a treble on the tennis, you're in luck. Get closer to the action every weekend with Betway's Man in the Know on the Weekend Sports Breakfast with Georgie Bingham and Mickey Quinn. Bringing you all the form on the football, the going at Goodwood, the tries at Twickenham, and the overs at the Oval. Every Saturday and Sunday morning from 7 on TalkSport with Betway. For the latest offers, head to Betway.com. With light showers set to last well into the... Now let's select the show where loads of celebrities get together to show us their... Very, very docile animals. They can happily spend up to 16 hours a day just sitting on the... Humble tin and now, I believe you're going to play a tune for us using just one string of your ukulele. Oh. January. January needs more good stuff, especially if you're stuck indoors. So Asda's reduced loads of prices, like this Chinese banquet takeaway meal for two. Nine pounds down to just six pounds to help make January in that little bit better. Asda. Save money, live better. Selected stores, lines and availability. I know. The state pension is changing. I know. How much you get will still depend on your national insurance record. And don't forget you may still have a private pension to consider too. I know. I'll be able to see how much I'm likely to receive and understand what I can do to improve my state pension. I know. If you reach state pension age on or after the 6th of April 2016, you'll be part of the new scheme. Make sure you know the facts about the new state pension. Visit gov.uk slash your state pension for more information. This Friday... The Euro Millions jackpot from the National Lottery is a staggering £99 million. Pounds. Plus, it's a mega Friday, and there'll be seven guaranteed UK millionaires. Play makes it possible. Estimated jackpot, games, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Talk sport. Oh, my word! Anyone fancy a game? I don't know how, but it's in! 
on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Best of all, it's totally free. That's unbelievable, man. Talk sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Uh, lots more coming up. Mm. Of course, Serena Williams has just won the first game against Radvanska yep. uh, over in Australia. I might ask you to do a little bit of commentary yeah, uh, sure. coming up in a little while, but I'm going to read out some more tweets I've here. Had a, I've had a few complimentary messages about my commentary, by the way. Yes, they, they, they will say it's very people, good. A lot of people have yeah, been very, very complimentary good, yeah. about it. Yeah, uh, and here's yeah. some more complimentary stuff because I'm starting to feel a bit sorry for you now, which is always a weakness what? of mine, I'm afraid. Uh, here's one. Liz Hilton, yeah. who you're always telling me I never read out any of her tweets, right? Here's one of hers. Yeah. Uh, he is on so many shows because he is more popular than you, she says. <laughs> Oh. I love you at Hilton Towers, dignified and more popular than Mike Graham. Thank you. And Dignity. How about this one, right? Dignity, yes. uh, here's one from somebody who doesn't give a name, but they've mm. texted into 81089. The reason Porky is on the radio so much is that he is so entertaining. I'm not naive enough to think that falling out on air isn't an act, but the truth is, without Porky, hardly anyone would listen to MG. Uh, that's that's, harsh, that's very harsh. That's yeah. really harsh. very harsh. I mean, we do bill ourselves, you know, as the two mics because there is two of us. Yeah. And uh, frankly, uh, individually, uh, we wouldn't be half as entertaining. Now, how about this me. one? M says this: as a Blackburn fan, Everton mm. fans should be careful what they wish for. Yeah. Pray, Mr. Kenwright. He is a rare owner in that he loves totally his club. Agree. Uh, totally and agree. Here's, and here's another one from Dominic, who's mm. given us some information about the old French breathalyzer. Yeah. Uh, he says the reason for drivers in France having to carry a set of at least two breathalyzers mm. is that it is a money saving initiative by the French. The police will use yours and not their own. So when and they stop you, and sus- if you don't have them, and you're suspected of drunk driving, yeah. you have to actually provide the thing that's. I mean, it's almost you have like to being your own yourself, executioner. Hoist yourself with your, your own, own patard. Patard. With Absolutely patard. right. Yeah. yeah. Now listen, talking about getting abroad, we've spoken to China. You're talking about France there. Yes. Now, you had a go at me the other night. You know, people call me a communist because I think uh, Mr Putin has a case. Well, we called you certainly a Putin sympathiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, of course, they're not a communist country anymore, so that's rubbish. Yeah. You know also the French now, by the way, and I'm going into the geopolitics of Europe now. Yes. The French now are asking for the, um, the embargoes that have been put on Russia yeah. for the alleged invasion of the Ukraine to ah. be now withdrawn. What do you mean, the alleged invasion? Well, See, there you go again. N- yeah. It's not anything alleged about it. No, they it invaded is. the Ukraine. No, there's a part of the Ukraine whose people are very much allied You're to Russia about Crimea. and not the West. Yeah, yeah the but Crimea. Ukraine is still an independent state. Well, and had become an independent state. Yeah, but it's not fully independent. Well, because it is. It, it's not. It's on the borders of Russia, and for no, but, no it's a separate for sixty country. years it was part of yeah. Russia. So a lot well, of the people well, there still want to be yeah, part but, of yeah, Russia. Yeah, but you could argue, make that same argument that the Scots make, where the Scots say, "Well, never mind the fact that you know Scotland's mm. part of the United Kingdom. It's mm. only been part of the United yes. Kingdom for three hundred years. Before that, it wasn't." So, yeah. therefore, we are an independent nation. Right, well, if me... you say that Ukraine was part of the Soviet yeah. Union, yeah. before that, it wasn't. Anyway, that's a separate argument, because what I want to tell you is this. Yeah, I have been told now by, you know, people who I speak to... Your handlers. Well, no, no, don't be ridiculous, but, I mean, my people in military intelligence, you know, <laughs> naval intelligence down on the coast and all that, right? Yeah, right. And um, I can tell you that they believe the secret uh, service in this country mm. you know the um, the secret well, mi6 well yeah, yeah okay well i wasn't going to say that but i mean i suppose it is mm. they believe there are as many russian spies operating in britain right. now as well, there were be, during I, the Cold War. I wouldn't be at all surprised. They, they say that the, the numbers, and, and Mr Putin is, like, he, he is personally head of the security services in Russia because he used to be head well, of the KGB. This is what, I mean, in the, in the wake of the, the yeah. Vanyenko sort of uh, judgment, yeah. one of the things that was said was that nothing yeah. happens in Russia or outside of Russia mm. without Mr Putin personally knowing about it. And that's it. happened for the last 20 years because yeah. even when he wasn't the president of Russia, he was prime minister, yeah. he invented the title for himself. That's right. And he had a puppet... Uh, what was his name, Mr Demetov, who was the, yeah, that's uh, right, yeah. the, the president. But yeah. anyway, anyway um, I have come across a document here, uh, a guy called Andrei Soldatov, yeah. who is a Moscow-based journalist, uh-huh. which I think that's a tricky business, Very actually, much so. if, you're, if you're writing things well, about Well, that's one Mr. of the Putin. reasons why, I, as much as you say you mm. have great admiration for yes. Putin, I yes. have to say I can't have admiration for yeah. him because he goes around p- putting journalists to death. Well, I mean, that's that not he doesn't good. Like. We've got a big friend in uh, Moscow, Will. Will, Will Stewart, Stewart, yes. Will Stewart runs Don't a, say his name in case... Uh, no, no, everybody knows him. He's married to a Russian girl now. Is he? Yeah, he's got yeah. Russian children, I think. Well, I told you I saw him outside a Hearts football right, club. you did, yeah. Because he suddenly yeah. came walking along with the, with with the Mr. Russian Mr. owner. Mr Romanov, That's who was right, Lithuanian. Yeah, I yeah, know. Um, who apparently owned a submarine. Owned a submarine, yeah, um, brilliant. And one of the things he did was he, mm. when he bought Hearts, he signed yeah. all these players... 
uh, to his Lithuanian sister club. Right, I see, yeah. And then suddenly all the money him. disappeared. And, yeah, but see, Will yeah. was apparently his special advisor. It, it's great. Bizarrely. Anyway, Mr Soldatov, Moscow-based journalist, uh, said that there are likely to be at least 30 Russian service agents mm. in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Some operate under diplomatic cover, so some of them are attached to the Russian embassy, right. you know, so that means they get diplomatic immunity if yeah. they're found to be but they're not dropping polonium in people's... Uh, they'll, they'll be listed as you know, cultural yeah, attaché. Well, yeah, right? the naval attaché and yeah. all that kind of stuff, right. you know. Um, while others are so Are you called... sure you don't know any of these guys? I don't, know. I don't. Really, believe me. So, others are so-called illegal agents, right? And they use false identities and they pose as British citizens. Right. What's that American series was on recently where all the Russian agents were just like normal American people making an apple pie with mum and all that kind of stuff? What was that called? I don't know. It was a, You're it, not thinking of Homeland? I think it might be Homeland. Are they, they Homeland. Rus- Russian agents based in America? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. No. Well, Homeland was more about sort of the uh, the war in the Middle East, and yeah, then no, no, this there, was, there were Russians no, in this, that. This series it, it, it unveiled the fact that uh, you know in some American suburbs, yeah. an all American couple, oh, right. you know, whose sons play. Oh, it's baseball. like No Way Out, then, isn't it? Is it No Way Out? Yeah, I don't know. That movie No Way Out with Kevin Cosner. Where he works for the Pentagon, and he's uh, right. you know he's, he's a big naval sort of big wig, yeah. and they they bring him into uh, to work with the uh, Secretary of State. But is he a Russian spy? But he's been a, he's been there since he was a young kid, right? And despite the fact that everybody assumes he's American, yeah. he's actually Russian. Wow, yeah. And he was planted there as a child. Anyway, it says, so those are the two types, right? The ones attached to the um, to the uh, embassy, right. and the second group who are like really. What do you call them? Sleepers. Yeah. And then there's a third group of agents who are Russian nationals. They're businessmen. They live openly in Britain. These people are usually recruited and trained by the Russian security services to gather intelligence. Right. Besides London towns and cities close to Royal Naval bases. So that's there must be where a few down in Gospel. Well, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, it's all starting to make sense now. Yeah, our targets. He said these include Clyde, home to the UK, UK's nuclear deterrent. Yeah as well as a new generation of hunter-killer submarines and Devonport in Plymouth. Blimey. Now, it says here, Devonport in Plymouth is the largest naval base in Western Europe. I dispute that because Portsmouth is bigger than uh, Devonport. Devonport just deals with a few ships and, and a lot of submarines. Well, there must be some down there as well, then. Hey? There must be some down in Portsmouth as well. Well, yeah, but anyway, listen, the thing is, there are three Russian intelligence services with active agents in Britain. Right. They are now called the GRU which is military intelligence, right. the SVR, yeah. foreign intelligence, uh-huh. and the FSB. That's the new KGB, isn't That's it? That's the successor to the KGB. Yeah. And these agents are involved in activities which include gathering secret information on Britain's military campaign in Syria, military hardware, technology, Westminster politics. I mean, it's all going on. Blimey. Yeah. Well, that explains an awful lot. Now, yeah. uh, we've just got about uh, a couple of minutes left uh, in this hour, so I think it's probably time for you to give us a little bit of a uh, burst okay. of uh, commentary right. uh, on this game because uh, yes. Serena Williams and Radvanska yes. uh, are, are, are hot at it, really, uh, and it's true right. love to uh, Serena Williams. What's, uh, what's the name of the, uh, her opponent? Uh, Agnieszka Radvanska. Radvanska, yeah. OK. So Ms Radvanska now in a pink dress, yeah. uh, who is Polish, hard-faced Polish woman. She's, hard-faced she, yeah, she throws a ball up, she smashes it over the net. <laughs> and t- Sorry, what's your problem. No, no, what I mean is she's got a typical Polish face. Yeah, right. It's kind of flat and hard. You know, I mean, <laughs> steely features, that's Indeed. what I mean. Yeah. Steely features. Determined looking, is yeah. that what you mean? Now, just as I was about to start that uh, commentary, <laughs> to broken. Serena has uh, walked off the court. Well, she double faulted, I think, didn't she? I think she double faulted, but as there's so now... So that makes three love, then, to Serena. As there's now a commercial break yeah. uh, on my uh, internal screen, yeah. I can't tell you what's going there's on. There's nothing else you can do. No. All right, well, I'll tell you so what. So that I'll was a very to... short-lived bit of commentary, yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, don't worry, We'll come back to you on we that will, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's one from D, uh, okay. who says, uh, your insight is uncanny. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are called the two mics because there are two of us. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's why I said that out. Yeah. Uh, and Saud says, John Stones is just a bad David Louise, which is interesting. No, he's not. Believe me, he's uh, much better than and that. And Becky says this, mm. uh, human head transplant, science fiction, most horrific. We love Porky the way he is. Yes. Uh, he deserves that head. Yes. Hashtag save Porky. Which head do I deserve? The head, the head I've got The head now. that you've got. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Of course I do. Uh, and also, uh, a couple of people are talking about Deacon Blue, saying mm. that they've been around since the 80s, which is probably correct. Yeah, I don't, I've never heard of them, to be Haven't honest. Haven't you have never heard of Deacon Blue? Well, since the 80s, that would be my ABBA period yeah. and moved into my Oasis period. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And uh, well, you must have heard the radio, yeah. though, once in a while. Well, no, no, no. I don't spend my time li- listening to rubbish on radio. In those days, when I was a big honcho in the world of uh, news and current affairs, yeah. like, you know, head of news at the Daily Express and things like that, 
I was permanently I had my ear well, permanently Hampton, welded. Well, Hampton, new Supremo. Per, yeah, new Supremo. That's uh, that's the title. Thank you. Yeah. Permanently welded to radios that broadcast politics right. and current affairs. Oh, and, I see. And all that kind of stuff. Oh, you know, right. that's all I ever used used to listen to. That's why I knew so much about everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, unlike now, Tony the Welk man, who's in a tranquil bog in the beach, says right. the way Porky is tonight, he could do with a new head. Then he would be a chimp off the old block. A chimp off Get the it? old block. Um, yeah. Not really and here's cool. one from James in York. who oh, says, yes. uh, guys, Porky should be grateful. I'm a new. Castle fan, mm. he's welcome to the Wally with the Brolly if we can have Martinez. Yeah, well, I totally agree with that, you see, and mm. that's because you've got to be very, very careful who you who you pick, and a very, very good bit of advice from the earlier Everton fan, uh, the earlier Blackburn fan, be careful what you wish for in the world of football, believe me. Yeah, very true. Oh, Serena's uh, now, on fire here, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. you've got about a minute if you want to give well, us a quick... Well, I'll tell uh, you what, she's got uh, some very nice sparkly earrings on. Yeah. And she's dressed in all yellow, as yeah. she has been throughout this tournament, yeah. having not lost a set. But she is pulverising her Polish opponent. Yeah. I mean, literally... The hard-faced Polish woman, <laughs> and I say that as a as a tribute. I'm yeah. not saying that uh, derogatorily. No, at all. It's is, just a descriptive uh, is, phrase. Is being blown away by Serena. She's Serena's launched another service, and it was a terrific service to a part of the court. It's a smash coming which up. It's a Polish lady going to just get to the ball. Just dropped into Serena's uh, ambience, and she smashed it with an overhead smash, which nearly, I'm telling you nearly exploded the court on the other side of the net. Mm. I reckon there must be a hole on the other side of the net. That was such a hard smash. Well, they've just given us a statistic there that said Serena Williams has hit ten winners. Ten winners. And Red Wanska's hit none. And none at all. It's 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 already 3-0. It's going to be 4-0 because Serena's serving. So she's serving to go 4-0 up. Oh, my God. Another smashing serve. I mean, literally. Oh, wow. 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 The Polish, the <laughs> hard-faced lady, just returned one. Which her nobody... name's Red Wanska. Red Wanska. Uh, I couldn't remember her name, actually. Uh, which nobody could see coming, and that wasn't, as, as old Dan Maskell would have said, a supreme pass. Yeah. It was Ooh, Dan Maskell, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I say. Yeah. Was what he used to do, wasn't it? Oh, I say. A mm. supreme pass. The colour coordination's better tonight, though, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's pink against yellow. Yeah. Um, no question. Oh. That's out, I think, isn't it? We, I think it was uh, just out. It's 30. Yeah, 30 all. Yeah. So this uh, that's the first time her opponent, uh, Miss Rad Vaninich, has... Um, <laughs> has you shut up. Has, Radvanska. Has, has, Radvanska has has gained two points in one game. Yeah. And I tell you what, the umpire like sitting, up, sitting up there in his chair, he's looking completely bemused by the strength and uh, power of Serena, who's yeah. smashed another one. I tell you what, she wrong foots her opponent a bit like I wrong footed the goalkeeper in my penalty success at Old Trafford. Well said. Yes. And very well timed as well, because uh, very, very shortly uh, we're going to be going to the news. On digital radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the Two Mics. Uh, you can tweet us at the Two Mics, at mm-hmm. Mike Parry, at I R O M G. You can, of course, go to the Two Mics Facebook page as well. Uh, if you haven't gone there yet, there's all sorts of pictures and all kinds of archive stuff there as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, you can find out how to get yourself some t shirts and some mm-hmm. DVDs yep. by going to the Two Mics.co.uk. Uh, now, there's a few, uh, a few tweets I need to read out to okay. you. Uh, one says from Sam in Liverpool Hawkey must have known Chapman Pincher of The Express, oh, an did. expert in the espionage world. Oh, I did. Was he still around when you started then? Well, he, he was, but not in the office, but I think I've told you the story. If I haven't, I'll tell you again. It was marvellous. Um, when I was a young reporter there, yeah. the news editor came over and he said, uh, you know, we've got a, a spy story going on. And I had to go around the Russian embassy and yeah. stake it out because some, you know, I think the ambassador had been called in to the foreign office or something like that. Yeah. So anyway, when I got back, um, the news editor said, right, he said, OK, and I had all the detail. He said, right, we'll give Chapman Pinch a ring. And I heard of Chapman Pinch, he was right. legendary. And... Um, and uh, see what he makes of it. Mm. So I ring this number, right, and their phone answers, yeah, hello. Oh, hello, uh, Mr Pincher. Who's that? Oh, it's Mike Parry here from the Daily Express, you know, the paper you used to work for. What's the code? (laughs) Sorry? Did they give you a code? Well, this is the point. What's the code? I said, no, I'm sorry, sir. I'm ringing you from the Daily Express. What is the code? I don't know who you are. You could be a Russian spy. <laughs> Was it something like the quick brown fox jumps over the well, lazy dog? Well, no, this, dog is, this is the point. I, it, uh, he said, I, I will not speak to you until you give me the code and put the phone down. Oh, dear. So I go to the news desk and said, the code? The code? Anyway, the code was locked in the editor's um, safe. Right. The editor was on holiday. <laughs> so the deputy editor... Not a very efficient system. No, well, he said, no, anyway, after, like, hours, mm, if sure. somebody found the, you know, the, the combination, the editor's safe, right. got the code out, right. 
And, and the code was literally something like, did I meet you on the park bench in Regent's Park yeah, recently? Right. And uh, Sorry, did I meet you on the bench by the fountains in Regent's Park yeah. recently? And when I gave him that, then he talked oh, to me. Oh, sorry, the It file. was, yeah, it was. How it was, it was amazing. But he was an amazing guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure when he you was. got together at sort of lunches and things, he'd tell, tell you all about it. You know? Now, I should tell you that uh, yeah. Serena Williams, as you quite rightly said, was yes. very dominant. She just won the first set six love. Oh, unbelievable. So I don't think this game's going to go very long. And by the way, by the way, sorry to interrupt there, did you realise, because I have only just by you know checking on my information device yeah that um the very very popular and famous tennis commentator gerald williams only died this week oh did he yeah do you I'm know sure the guy? i know gerald williams you, no. well he had, he had well, a i very, might recognize his voice he had a very wide smile yeah. he, had, he had he had flashing white teeth and right. glasses uh-huh you know he was the guy so he used to do wimbledon then yeah he used to do wimbledon he was the guy he was the guy who um he used to work with des Lynham sometimes on oh, the yeah, programs okay. at night you know yeah i see that picture, you, yeah. You'll, you'll you'll know him I'll show you that picture on my information device, oh yeah. rob says this listen to porky's tennis commentary it's just like yeah. being there yeah of course it was uh, and a couple of people have said the Americans is the name of the programme with the Russians posing as an American couple that's, in that is Northern the one. Virginia. I think you're right. I that's, think you're right. Well, that's what people are saying. Yeah, I think that and is Becky the one. says, perhaps the locked room is a safe house for Russian operatives working <laughs> no. in stockbroker belt Surrey. No, it's not at all. Not at all, honestly. Yeah. Um, now, I've got something to tell you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I saw on, yeah. something uh, yesterday that I thought you'd be interested in. Uh, McDonald's, right. where you said uh, you opened the first one, or you went to the first opening of they're one. They're giving in, waiter service in, now, in Russia. They? Well, no, in Japan, yeah. uh, they've got a new source for chips. Yeah. And guess what it is? No. Chocolate. Oh, no, come off I'm it. I'm not joking. No, no, no. I'm not fried that, chocolates, potato chocolate oh, no, sauce. No, that would be absolutely disgusting. There's a picture of I, it here, I, look. That would be disgusting. Like fried potato chocolate sauce. Oh, well, I mean, forget it, I wouldn't have it. Would you have chocolate sauce on your chips? I don't think I would. I wouldn't. But, honestly. you know, funnily enough, chocolate is something mm. that they cook. There's a restaurant, I've t- I think I've told you about it before, in Borough Market, yeah. uh, which is uh, connected to a chocolatiers in Borough Market, and it does um, sort of chocolate-flavoured recipes of all sorts of different things. Really? Yeah, and they do chocolate-flavoured um, uh, 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 drinks and, you know, chocolate-flavoured, um, you know, main courses. Really? And, and I went there and I took my daughter there and I had, uh, I think it was mashed potatoes with white chocolate in it, and it was quite nice. Mashed potato and white chocolate, I don't think Yeah, no, it was quite nice. I honestly... And I, the Mexicans use a lot of chocolate in their recipes as well. Do they? Yeah, yeah I, I, I honestly don't think I could uh, stomach that. You know, I, I really don't. See, there's the chips. Look, you get... Well, it's, it's a mixture of, of, of brown chocolate yeah, and white chocolate. awful. I mean, that looks to me like chips, chips. With, uh, with brown sauce on, which I quite like. Yeah, you know, does. I wouldn't have a problem but with that But you know the thing all. about McDonald's chips, and mm-hmm. the thing about anything you eat at McDonald's, it's got loads of sugar in it anyway. So, I mean, sometimes yeah, if you're not yeah. used to... If I don't eat it very often. Sure. And you notice how sweet it is. Sure. It's really, really sweet. Sure. Um, I've just come across a list of uh, Britain's ten oldest cities. Oh, yeah. Right? For no particular reason. Uh-huh. I, I, I love these statistics on this thing because oh, yeah. I love our country so much and the older the city, the better I love it, so right? So what's like Britain's oldest city, then? Well, you see, the, now, this, this is the reason why I've mentioned this to you. When I drive to my place in Orwell Quay, which is just outside Ipswich, yeah. I have to go down the A14. Uh-huh. And you pass a junction... That's which, on your way from uh, London. Well, so what, you don't what, go through Norfolk. No, no, no. If I'm going from, say, Surrey, I go round the underbelly of the M25, over the Queen Mother Bridge, or under the tunnel. No, it's over the bridge going that way, isn't it? What, yeah. you, uh, what you mean, at Dartford? At Dartford. No, it's under the tunnel. You it's go under in the, the tunnel. tunnel if you go north. Under the tunnel, yeah. you go north. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, there's half a tunnel. And then two junctions later, you turn right Don't forget off... to, to register for paying the toll, by the way. Uh, well, do you know that they've run up a bill of nearly £10 million of people who haven't paid that really? toll? Yeah. Well, how because... why come they haven't collected it? Because a lot of them are foreign drivers. Oh, yeah. And once they've gone on the ferry and gone back, they can't find them. But, I mean, no, you're right to mention that, because the first time I came back from Orwell Quay and came across that bridge, it just had a sign saying, are you registered for the toll? Right. And so there were no... They, they got rid of the toll booths. And right. it actually it very much speeds up the traffic. Right. But it means they lose all their revenue. Mm. Because a week later, yeah. I realised I hadn't, and I knew I'd forgotten to do something, yeah. so I rang them up. And, beca- yeah, it, <laughs> and you get 24 hours only to pay your toll. Right. But I said... Well, that's quite generous, isn't it? Yeah, I said, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. And they said, well, when did you come across? I said, it was a week ago now. Mm. And they said, well, if you pay now, we'll let you off. Really? It's a new system, so yeah. So no fine? No fine. So, so you did? So, and do you know how much the toll was? How much? It's about £2.40 or Is something. All? So for £2.40... Well, it used to be a quid, to be fair. Is it, did it? Yeah, OK, yeah. So you get a £6 fine. Anyway, the point of my story is... Yeah. So then you go over the bridge, right, or you go under the tunnel, and two junctions up, you turn right, down the A14. I think it's the A14. It might be the A13, but I think it's the A14. And then you're heading to um, Ipswich and Felixstowe, right? Yeah. Now, halfway down that road, 
um, there's a there's like a monument on the side of the road mm. to the at the junction to Colchester, right? Which used to be one of the biggest army bases in this yeah. country, but of course they it's a Roman it town, isn't it? Well, it says that's the point I'm making. Is it says Colchester, Britain's oldest. Uh, town. Is that right? It says that on the yeah. Scott. It says Britain, and, and it was the first one that well, it was the, one of the first Roman settlements. That, that's that's for right, sure. yeah. So when Along I was St Albans and London, I would have thought though. Well, I was just about to say to you, so when I saw that, I thought, oh, well, uh, so this list just popped up on an information device, yeah. and apropos nothing, I thought, oh, well, Colchester has to be at the top of that. But they've got number one, oldest town in this, uh, oldest city, this says, so maybe there's a difference between towns and cities. Yeah, maybe. But it says oldest UK cities, top ten, number one, Ripon. In North York, oh, okay. Whose charter Where was Richard granted? Where Richard III came from? Wasn't in it? eight, I don't know. I know he came from Richmond, I think. Yeah, he came from Richmond. Yeah, in eight uh, eighty six. Second oldest town, London, ten sixty six. Right. That was the year of the invasion, yeah. which you know all about because you live down there. Yeah. Third oldest town, Edinburgh, eleven twenty four. Sorry, cities. These right. are cities. City of Britain, City of London, City of Edinburgh. But what about the Roman ones then? Well, hang on. The fourth oldest. You're absolutely right. Chichester, eleven thirty five. Then Lincoln, Oxford, Nottingham, Nottingham, eleven fifty-five. Yeah. Winchester, Exeter, Carlisle. Right. Well, hang on. Where's Chester? Well, where's, where's my hometown well, city? Also, well, what's all the Roman stuff? Where's St Albans? Well, Chester is the Verul- Roman city. Verulanium. Chester is the yeah, Roman but they, city. Yeah, but they got us in Albans first because they came from the south. Yeah, they? that's right. St Albans, York, Londinium, York, Londinium, York. I mean, I don't think they've got that right. I think they've got it completely wrong. I yeah. think it's an absolute fraudster type list. So I'm taking no notice of it whatsoever. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's Colchester, then Chester, pal. Exactly. You put on your pipe. And smoke it. Yeah, quite. Mm. Now, here's one from Brian who okay. says, uh, I'm hold on, Porky. What are you watching? Tennis or a catwalk show? By what? the way, Radvanska's actually won a game. Yep. Shocking. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she's won it up in the second set. She definitely has, uh, but it's not uh, It's not phasing uh, Serena at all. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. Becky says, I work with some very nice Polish doctors. None of them can be described as hard faced. Porky's generalising. Well, hang on. Are they men or women? She doesn't say. Men's Polish men's faces are granite like. Granite like? Yeah, in my experience. Yeah. Also hard then. No, the women's faces are. When I say hard, I mean that sort of steely type feature. Yes. Uh, uh, very yeah, attractive, no, I, I yeah. have to say. Very yeah. attractive, but steely. I didn't get the sense that you were being derogatory in any way. Uh, w- Russian women are sometimes described as having Russian peasant face. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what the peasant face yeah, Russian yeah. looks like? Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of, again, very attractive, but just peasantish. if yes. you know what I mean? It's, a, it's a, an expression used about people <laughs> of, um, of sl- nothing... Slavian uh, heritage. <laughs> There's nothing like uh, what? Uh, uh, casual racism, is there? No, no, no. Now, how about no, this no. from mm. Freddie? Is Homeland the first two syllable or more word that Mike Perry has pronounced correctly? What? Homeland. Homeland. Yeah, well, I don't know how to pronounce Have that. Have you ever seen that? that? What are you doing on Porky Vision, by the way, today? Uh, well, I'm going to leave it as a secret, actually, but it's a very good one. Is it? And it is totally about Rogerization. Yeah. Totally. Is and, it? And, and, yeah, and, 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 and it's a complicated one. Right. But speaking I, of I, which, right, speaking of but which... I, but I've made it simple. All right, speaking of mm. which, uh, mm. just before we, we stop for a moment, uh, here's one from Kieran. My brother Scott listened to the podcast and mm. recently got engaged. Could you get Porky to shout out a special message to him and Anisha? What's his name? Uh, he doesn't say... His brother Scott right. and Anisha. Scott and Anisha. Yeah. Right, uh, this is for Scott and Anisha. Congratulations on your betrothment. I wish you the happiest and most successful life that any young couple can possibly have. And I'm delighted to say... You have the uh, honour of the... What's it called uh, when you give somebody a, a medal or something? I don't know. The, uh, anyway, you, you get the Porky medal for engagement. Congratulations and well done. He'll be in touch, uh, he'll be in touch after, you, after you get married, obviously. This is Talk Sport. The Fawn Zone on Talk Sport with Betfair. This is play. Listen to Talk Sport throughout the weekend for Betfair's experts' essential guide to all the latest form and odds as all the big teams face off. Everything you need to keep ahead of the game and make sure you know where the smart money is this weekend. Enter the form zone every weekend on Talk Sport with Betfair, where you can cash out in play on single or accumulator bets, so you can take your winnings before the end of the match. Selected markets, conditions apply. Gamblerware.co.uk. Hello, handset claim. Hello, I've lost my phone. Okay, how did it happen? Well, it rang, but it was in my pocket, and I had my mittens on. See, it's so cold at the moment. I cannot wait till January's over. So anyway, I was struggling to get it out of my pocket because I had my mittens on and then I did get it out of my pocket, but it slipped, sort of, out of my hand and fell down a drain. 
Did you sign up to mitten cover, madam? January needs more good stuff. So Asda's got loads of products all at a pound, like Young's Fish Fillets, Chicago Town Pizzas, McCain Jacket Potatoes, and Lloyd Grossman's Pasta Sauce. Not to mention Warburton's Thins, Aunt Bessie's Crumble, Flash Spray, and Sharwood's Bolty Sauce. All a pound to help make January that little bit better. Asda. Save money, live better. Selected lines, stores, and availability. Chicago Town, McCain, Lloyd Grossman, Sharwood's, Flash Wipes, and 3rd Feb. As much as light can be illuminating, it can also be blinding. But because the new BMW 1 Series with high beam assist technology dips the full beam automatically, oncoming traffic is never dazzled. And you can keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Enlightened thinking. The new BMW 1 Series. Pure BMW. Don't phone your mother. Phone talk sport. Football. Football. The uh, football on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Ah, Atletico Radio. Talk sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two Mike Sporky Vision coming up in a little Ooh. while. Uh, we'll keep you updated, of course, on Serena Williams. It's 2 1 currently to her in the yes. second set. She yes. won the first set by six games to love. Dave the Milk has tweeted in. Yes. Uh, he says Radvanska got criticised last year in Poland for posing naked in a photo shoot with just her racket. Oh, really? Stone, so I was hashtag right. Hashtag stone faced. I was right there when I said that she was rather an attractive woman. Mm. And uh, I will give you a bit more uh, commentary on Serena yeah. probably towards the end of this set. Okay. okay. Well, let's because... go, go for a quick update to Lisa O'Sullivan. Uh, and find Indeed. out what she thinks. It looks like it could be quite a short game. This I was going to say, I, w- I wouldn't leave it too long, Mike, because uh, Serena Williams is just in supreme form. In that first set, uh, I don't think she made one unforced error and she hit so many winners that Radvanska really just didn't know what to do and she's just setting them up. And Serena is slapping away the winners. It is so one-sided. Serena Williams heading towards a record seventh title here if she plays like this in the next match because I think it's just a question of time before she moves through this semi-final. Radvanska's got no idea how to counter what uh, Williams is producing from the back of the court. And she's coming into the net. And once she's at the net, then Radvanska just can't get the ball past her. So we've seen a couple of clever shots from the pole but just not enough to get in the match. And I think the crowd at the Rod Laver Arena getting a little bit bored, really. But uh, on the positive side, it does mean that Johanna Conta and Angelique Kerber will take to the court sooner rather than later. But at the moment, it's Serena Williams who leads by a set, having taken the first set six love and two games to one with the break in the second. Lisa, thank you very much indeed. A couple more te- texts here. Yeah. One from uh, Matt who says, Good fellas do a pizza with chocolate on it that you cook in the oven. Ugh. Mm. No thanks. And James says, Porky mate, Chester wasn't granted city status until 1541, a pretty modern city full of wine bars and coffee shops. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's good to know. Thank you very much for letting me know that. Nevertheless, the Romans were there a long time before that. They it's were. a beautiful city as well. Mm. Um, you know, the Serena Williams thing, Mike, I-, I feel a bit sorry for Serena Williams because she's so good. Yeah. And the problem is, because she's so good, she won't get the appreciation she deserves because people, as Lisa has just told us, will get bored watching yeah, her. That's right. And, and when you get bored watching her, you take it for granted. Mm. And when you take a, an athlete or a professional person for granted, a bit like Michael Schumacher, yeah, uh, if you and maybe I mean, Tiger Woods after a while, and Tiger Woods, then then you, the, the appreciation for their superb talent diminishes because you take them for granted and you think they're always going to be there. So I feel a bit sorry. By the way, talking about Michael Schumacher, yeah. who I believe is still in a you know a very parlous state following yeah. his his fall. Did you see the video today of the girl skier, the lady yes, skier, who, fell who came down the feet. street. It was unbelievable, yeah. wasn't it? If I saw her being interviewed. Yeah, uh, I did as well. And she was she, laughing and she smiling. Was, yeah, and and she, the way those... she tumbled. And do you know what I thought to myself? I mm. thought, goodness gracious, how can life be so cruel? She yeah. fell a thousand feet yeah. down an almost sheer drop, mm. bouncing, tumbling, rolling. Because the snow was relatively soft, I guess. On either side, you could see all these bare rocks, yeah. couldn't you? You know, and she fell down the mm. middle. And you think Michael Schumacher literally 
fell over doing about 15 miles an hour. Well, no, he was going very fast, wasn't he? I, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He, well, was, he was wearing he was a crash on... helmet. I thought he was going quite fast. Well, he wore a crash helmet if he was going two miles an hour. You know, he was a skier. But what I'm saying is I think he came off piece, and I don't think he was going fast at all, and he and he hit one rock, it tipped him over, and he hit his head on another, and I thought, how cruel is that? Yeah. Now, listen, I want to talk about tragedy. I want to talk to you about something else. Yes. I, it's just become uh, apparent to me, because my information device bleeps these things out to me, today is the anniversary sadly, of the American Space Shuttle Challenger. Challenger, yes. Which blew up, do you remember? 1986, right? 1986, you must have been there then. Well, I was, yeah. Funnily enough, I was, I'd was. i just been hired by a Today newspaper, right. uh, which hadn't yet started publishing, yeah. uh, because uh, they were about to publish, I think, about a week later. Or Eddie Shaw. Eddie Shaw, Shaw was in Vision. charge of it. It was going to be the first colour newspaper. That's right. And funnily enough, of course, back then, everyone said, why would you want a colour newspaper? Nobody That's wants right. a colour newspaper. That's right. It's yeah. quite be- unbelievable to it think is, that yeah. not that long ago, yeah. all newspapers were in black and white. That's right, yeah. Um, anyway, so they were doing their first, as they called it, dummy run. Mm. Um, and so I was actually, um, you know, their New York correspondent was the woman at that called Kirsty, one of the victims? Uh, yeah, well, well, there was a teacher on it, wasn't there? That's a teacher, the yeah. teacher, that's right. I, I thought her name exactly. was Kirsty. It might have been, yeah, I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. That was the occasion on which I was I was asked to call Neil Armstrong when he told me famously to F off. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When yeah. I got through to him in his office in uh, Chicago University. Because though I was working in America at that time, I was mm. actually back, back in England. Yeah. Because I was in the newsroom at the Express. Well, I remember watching it, because it was still in yeah, those I, days... Yeah, you, I would, you, would, you would still watch the shuttle taking That's off. That's right. Because it was relatively sort of new. That's right. I um, mean, there had been quite a lot of them, but you still watched it. And it blew and suddenly, up. And I remember them panning from the, uh, the, the sort of the explosion in the sky when everything went off in about four different directions. Like a load of fireworks yeah. going in different directions. And they suddenly panned back to the crowd. Because yeah. I've been at Cape Canaveral as well. That's right. Uh, down in Florida. That's right. Um, and basically where you see uh, the, there's a bank of people and yeah. the families all standing there and the looks on their faces as they realised that something terrible had yeah. happened. I know. It was because terrible, at first yeah. nobody knew. At first it just looked like, oh, that was meant to happen. Yeah, it, and then they suddenly realised, oh no! Everybody thought that one part of the rocket had 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 like blown off the you know yeah. the top of another part of right. the rocket, and, it, and as you quite rightly say, it was all part of it. What I didn't realise was that what had exploded were those huge fuel tanks that have to take the uh, Challenger into orbit, right. into space. Yeah, and then do you remember the? Uh, and then they didn't obviously do one for a long time after that, but they did yeah. that big investigation, and they found out that it was the seals, those right. black rings, yeah. that were supposed to seal everything in in the fuel, unbelievable, uh, which went wrong. And you can't believe that something so no. basic. No, you can't. Was the cause of no. such a terrible thing? No, you can't. Ab- absolutely terrible. Awful. And uh, and and it put the whole thing on hold, didn't it, for about two years? Yeah. Um, now then, uh, what's I going to talk to you about? Yeah, what I want to talk to you about is the um, you know we talked earlier about drink and all this. Yes. Uh, this has come to my attention, and you've got to be careful; it doesn't happen to you. Uh-huh. A man who insisted he can drink twenty pints and stay sober. Oh yes, I saw this story. Banned from all the pubs in his yeah. town. Well, he clearly is not a man uh, who's quite in control of not only his faculties, but also his drinking problem. Well, He this seems is... to think that he's fine, now, but obviously no. he's not fine. Now, this is in Clandudna. Yes. Which is North Wales. It is indeed. Clandudna. Have, have you ever been to Clandudna? Not only have I been there, um, but I, was, had to, I had to go there to... Uh, I had to stay in a hotel there. Well, I had to stay in a, I'd stayed in a lovely hotel, actually, on the outskirts. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. was lovely. I stayed on one on the front. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not so good. Clandudna. I had to go there for a Wales, Wales Labour Party conference. Wales right? Labour Party conference? Because we used to yeah, sponsor them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, when I was yeah, running the yeah. Welsh Mirror, we used to right, sponsor yeah, them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But the problem was mm. uh, that the night before I was due to go up there and meet Rodri Morgan, who was then the first minister. That's right, yeah. Uh, who was going to, you know, give us some big dinner and do all right, that sort yeah. of stuff. We were going to big interview with him and all that, yeah. set piece, sort of Daily Mirror type sure, thing. Sure, Unfortunately, the night before, mm. uh, our political editor uh, and our news editor, yes. whose name should remain uh, unknown at this moment, yes. got into a punch-up in the Curry House. What, the two of them? Between them. Oh, I see. Yeah. The two employees of the Daily yes. Mirror started smashing each other's yes. faces in, yeah. in the courier. And I, in yeah. fact, got a phone call from had one of them. Had drink been taken? Drink had been taken. Mm. Um, and at 10.30 at night, my phone went. I was in London. Yeah. And one of them was on the phone yeah. saying, I can't stand this bloke any longer. If right. you don't do something about it, there's going to be a problem. Yeah. And then suddenly there was this horrendous crash. Right. And the table went up. And, so you they know, started punching each other's faces in yeah. as, as they were talking to you? Yeah, as, as they were talking to me. I see, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the next thing that happened was that, unfortunately, you know, the police were called. Mm. Uh, you know, one of them sort of ran off. Yeah. Uh, but the problem was, was the whole restaurant was full of either Labour Party delegates yes. or other members of the press. I see, yeah. And as you can imagine, mm. you know, the whole... Didn't go down well. Well, the conference was so boring mm. that this became a big story. Right, yeah, great. So everybody, when I arrived, yeah. you know, there was literally, like, people following me around asking me for comments. Yes, that's horrendous. right. Are oh, you going to sack these Absolutely two uh, drunken yeah. miscreants and all that kind yeah. of stuff? incredible. Did the dinner go ahead with uh, Rodri? Uh, no, not really. No. Uh, we sort of cancelled that. Yeah, and, right, yeah. And I mean, we had to spend the whole day kind of firefighting, yeah. making sure that no other papers carry 
carried the story. And did you have to sack both of them? Um, no. Funnily enough, they both survived. OK. One of them wasn't Don Mackay, was it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Who, he's now retired. He's now retired, but was, in fact, married to a wonderful actress who appeared Indeed. in Coronation Street. She did, yeah. Nicola Murthman. Nicola... Uh, yeah, that's not that. It was Wasn't Nicola it? something, Nicola, yeah. Nicola something, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the point of the story Yeah, sorry, is, anyway, I so, digress. No, that's a great story. So, in Clan Budno, um Oh, the reason I was there was because uh, it was the first uh, public tour of uh, Charles and Diana. Oh, right, OK. Diana, and as he was Prince of Wales, yeah. they started in North Wales, right. you know, they went to Clan Dudno. But anyway, this guy, his name is Colin Sheridan, right? Right. Now, he drinks his 20 pints a day and says it doesn't affect him. Mm. However, he was pulled up because he was staggering around and his, and his speech was slurred when he tried to go yeah. to a shop and order but things. But did he claim he was suffering from a stroke or something? He, he said, it's not my fault I've just had a stroke. And he said, the reason I'm staggering and keep falling over is I've got a foot injury. <laughs> uh, never, nevertheless, uh, local magistrates um, told him he was banned from drinking in the town, certainly not 20 pints, right? Uh, he calls himself a businessman. He's from Old Colwyn. Right. But he now faces a tri- another trial for another drink-related And he can't offense. go into any pub in the whole town. Can't go into any pub in the whole town. But amongst the things he's been accused of, mm. um, you know, and I, I have to, you know, stress everybody in this country is innocent until proved guilty, but he's got to answer charges of making nuisance 999 calls, <laughs> needing an ambulance when right. uh, when he's bladder Right. I mean, it's, Unbelievable. You know, could only happen in Land Dudno. I know. Land Dudno. It is quite a place. It really is like the land that time forgot. But we may tell you more stories about that coming exactly. up. Uh, next, though, it's Porky Vision on TalkSport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The pressure's on now. Relieve the itch. Talk sport. <laughs> That music can only signal one thing, and it is, of course, the return of Porky Vision, the weekly yep. TV review, yep. uh, which is uh, listened to from, uh, uh, I don't know, from, I suppose, Land's End to John O'Groats oh. to Timbuktu to Pyongyang. Widely uh, waited for and widely admired, I'm told. Very much so, yeah. 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 So what have yeah. you got for us? You've promised us well, lots of Rogerisation. No, now this is total Rogerisation yeah. situation, OK? Mm. And it actually... Uh, concerns one of my favourite programmes of all time, that's Coronation Street, yes. OK? So I'm telling you all now, it's Coronation Street, it's Rogerisation, OK? Mm. That should make all your ears sort of prick up, OK? As it were, yes. Because normally speaking, uh, uh, Coronation Street is not about Rogerisation. Normally speaking, it's about, you know, s- you know, Tales of the Cobbles yeah. and all that kind of stuff. For instance, Emily Nugent has left the show uh, just recently. just Who's she? Last, last week. Uh, she, she's the longest-serving actress. Is she? Ken Barlow's the longest-serving actor. OK. Emily Nugent's longest serving actress, mm. and uh, she has now gone off to Peru. That's the, the storyline, oh, okay. which is a bit far-fetched. So they haven't killed her off in any weird way or anything? No, but I think she is leaving the show now, right. but I mean, she's in her 80s, right. and, and you know, supposedly gone off to Machu Picchu. So what's she gone to Peru for? She's well, in her because, 80s. because she had a, 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 a great nephew who's become an explorer over there, and she's decided to go and join him. You know, right. It's ludicrous. But anyway, look, this is the Rogerisation situation. Get this, it's mass Rogerisation on a scale never before seen on British television. Is it? And I need to explain it to okay, you. Okay, go on. Right, so to start off with, um, Carla, right, who is a beautiful woman with very high cheekbones, yeah. um, she is um, engaged to. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who runs the wine bar. I don't know, there's no point asking me because no, I don't know what's okay. going on. Uh, Tilsley, his name is Tilsley. I can't remember his first name. Is it Rob? Rob, John? No. Frank? No, no, hang on, hang on. Uh, Bill? No, 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 just shut up. And Sorry, I'll, I'll I'm trying to help it. you. Uh, Tilsley. Um, Neil? Nick, Nick. Right. Nick. Right, so Carla is engaged to Nick. Right. And Nick runs the wine bar called right. Nick's Bistro. OK. And Nick employs a chef. And the chef is the former husband of the worst woman on the street mm. who is called... Um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy. Tracy. Now then, Tracy... I was fingered for the crime. Uh, oh, Tracy yeah. has been convicted of murdering a previous boyfriend already. Well, why isn't she in prison? Because she got let off on appeal because of a technicality. Uh, OK. So she gets out of prison, right, right, and then she works her way through, like, half the men in the street, okay. and then amazingly... Um, the the chef turns up. Now, his name is Robert. Right. I remember that, yeah. Good. 
And he's her former husband. What, Tracy's former husband? Tracy's right. former husband. Obviously not and, the one she murdered. No, no, and despite the fact that she murdered Charlie the Builder, who right. was her boyfriend, okay. also on the street, yeah. um, Robert says he wants Tracy back. Does he? So he they're, mad? So they're together, right. and Carla is together with Nick, and then Carla keeps getting completely bladderated right. because she's under stress. Right. Because she was accused herself mm. of killing another girl in the street who fell off a balcony. OK. But it wasn't her. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't her. OK. So, oh, no. So who no, killed the woman no. who f- fell off the balcony? No, then? hang on. Well, that's another guy called Rob who's in jail. OK. But not Robert. Not Robert. Now, the, the situation is... Car- sorry, Carla was not accused of uh, killing the... Carla was accused of setting fire to her own apartment... OK. ...and killing the bloke who came in to rescue her. Uh-huh. OK? Why would she do that? Well, she didn't mean to. Right. I mean, she lit a candle, but she didn't light a candle. What happened is Tracy came in in the middle of the night, yeah. broke into her apartment, right. lit a candle, and yeah. set fire to the place. OK. Did but she it, mean to do that? No. Uh, well, we don't know, really. Right. She's lit this candle. But why did she kill the bloke that came in to rescue her? Well, no, he died in the fire. Oh, I see. The floor collapsed and the ceiling oh, collapsed dear. and he died. You know, right. so, so that was it. Was that that famous scene when the whole street was on fire? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. he was, yeah. Anyway, the point of the story is... So, so where's the Rogerisation? Well, I'm about to tell you. Mm. So Carla is stressed out all the time, yeah. right? So she does two things. She right. gets completely bladderated, yeah. either in the Rover's Return... Yeah. Or, or in the wine bar. Or in Nick's Bistro. Yeah. But then she goes off and gambles her whole fortune away. I mean, she owns the local knicker factory. Oh, OK. But she's gambling all the way. Knicker factory? Yeah, knicker factory. It's okay. called Underworld. It makes knickers. Right, OK. Right? And bras and right. stuff, lingerie and that yeah. kind of stuff, right? right? So anyway, so she has another stressful, you know, blackout. Yeah. Uh, 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 and she uh, goes off to the casino. Right. So she's in the casino gambling, and all of a sudden, uh, Robert, who is Tracy's boyfriend and ex-husband, yeah. turns up in the casino. Utterly ridiculous. What's he doing there? Nobody knows. Hang on, so he's the guy that was married to her and wants to get back with her. Is that the guy? With Tracy? Yeah. But not Carla? Not Carla. Not Carla? No. OK. So, so he... And, and remember... Mm. Robert, the chef, works for Carla's boyfriend, Nick, who runs the who bistro. Who runs the bistro, right. So, okay. anyway, so, so she's there at 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, at the roulette tables, yeah. you know, drinking, bladderating, yeah. gambling, and all of a sudden, old uh, the chef, Robert, turns up and says, oh, hi, is this seat taken next yeah. to her? So she says, no, love, you know, if you want to, and she knows who he is, but yeah. we've never seen him in the casino before. OK. She's been using the casino for the past two or three years. Right. He's never turned up before. OK. Anyway, what happens I guess he's is... not making lunch that day if it's about that time. Oh, he's, uh, he's walked out on Nick, he's having a row oh, or something, okay, you right. see. So anyway, so he suddenly goes high roller gambler, mm. says, oh, all in, and right. pushes all his, his, his chips onto one colour and right. one number. Right. And I believe the number was 47. Was it? Because apparently that is a popular number on a roulette wheel, 47? Right? Yeah. Well, it's the yeah. most frequently yeah. occurring random number. OK, yeah. So, anyway, no. what happens is the ball goes bop, 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 the way it bounces yeah. around on a roulette table. Yeah. And then... And all of a sudden, it's landed. Oh, everybody celebrates. He's landed you know. on 47. He's landed on 47. Amazing. And he's got, uh, like, a huge like, amount of money. Right. So then uh, he says... Right, you just have it on the one number, then? Yeah, on the one number, apparently. So you get 33 to 1 for that. Ludicrous you? plot. Yeah. So anyway, they're all buying the champagne. Mm. And as they're drinking the champagne, completely apropos nothing... He says, come on, Carla, should we finish this upstairs? Yeah. Now, Carla, who is engaged to... So it's to... also a hotel, this place. It's a hotel as right. well. So Carla, who's engaged to his boss, yeah. goes upstairs and um, Robert gives her a really good shafting, you know <laughs> what I mean, sort of thing. You see what I mean? I do, yeah. Yeah, upstairs. Well, what's that? I mean, people can't see how you were no, illustrating no, well, that, but exactly, I certainly, yeah, yeah, I certainly of, got the picture. Sort of gyra- you know, gyrating yeah. sort of movement, if you see what I mean. Right. And, um, Not a fromby, hopefully. No, 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 no. Well, I don't know. I wasn't They don't the show that sort of thing on no, Coronation Street. No, no. But anyway, a few hours later, yeah. Carla sobers up right. and says, oh, we shouldn't have done this. Mm. And then she goes off back to her... Um, in floods of tears. In floods of tears. She goes back to see Nick, asks for another couple of bottles of Well, this of is what wine. happens when you've had too much to drink. This is true. This Do is things true. you might regret. But anyway, anyway, the reason, one of the reasons that she's had a blackout and got all upset right. is she just found that the man who was her uncle uh-huh. had, in fact, been screwing her mother... Right. And that her uncle was really her father. Oh, dear. Because of mass rogerisation yeah. 40 years ago. But did she not know her father then? Is that no, true? her father just pushed off when right. she was young, you and see. she was told that this guy yeah. was her uncle. Yeah, that's right. Blimey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so the rogerisation factor yeah. is that Carla is upset because she's found out that her uncle stroke father have been rogerising the wrong actually, people. Yeah, he's actually her real father. Yeah. yeah, she goes off and she... And is he still around, this guy, then? 
Who? The, the guy uncle. who's her real father, yeah. Well, the, the uncle just turned up out of the blue. Oh, I see, right. And, and then this, this terrible secret emerged, yeah. you see. Oh, OK. The terrible secret emerged. Now, while all this is going on, yeah. while all this is going on... Um, Don't tell the, me there's more. Uh, oh, yeah, there's more Rogerisation. Yeah. There's a woman called Mary... Right. In the street, okay, and she she lives in like a camper van parked on the street. Except, she... that, well, the camper van's disappeared. Right. I don't know where she lives now. Hmm. But anyway, she finds a bloke because they both like UFOs and right. they go off up in the Yorkshire Dales. Uh, sorry, the Peak District, yeah. looking for them, which okay. is near Coronation Street. Yeah. Except that she's just found out that he is married. Also, yeah. right, right. So she's now heartbroken because he's Rogerizing his wife instead of her. Right. But the other, Which is fair enough. The other problem is that uh, there's a guy in it called uh, Ralph or no something. Oh, uh, uh, Roy. 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 And okay. He, he runs. Roy's Rolls, yeah, which is a that's uh, quite clever. It's a cafe. Yeah, Roy's Rolls, Roy's not Rolls. Rolls, Rolls. I like that. You know I mean, yeah. yeah. And he has got a new girlfriend who is quite a respectable woman who he met on the allotment because yeah. she inherited her dead husband's allotment shed yeah. and he found her in there. Mm. OK. Right. Romantic. In the shed? In the shed. Blimey. And, 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 and he's... Sounds like a man after your own heart. And, that caravan. And, and she has just discovered yeah. that for the last five years of her husband's life, yeah. the one who died and left of the shed, yeah. her husband was screwing her sister. Oh, dear. Who was also turned up in the street out of the blue. Blimey. So there's mass Rogerization, yeah. screwing and, and you know... All connected. ...illicit sex going yeah. on all over the place. Horrendous. And I'm telling you, it's becoming a hotbed of real sexual frenzy. So it's worth watching, then, is what you're well, saying. Well, it's not really. You don't see any action or anything like that. It's oh, just don't all, mean these, that. all these terrible, um, you know, all, the, all these... Uh, and at the same plots. time, at the same time, there's a gay vicar... Right. ..who is also in the street... Yeah. And the gay vicar who's, is trying to sort out all these terrible mm. sort of, you know, inter Moral dilemmas. Yeah. situations. Dear me. And well, all I'll this keep kind of stuff. for years, won't it? Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, like, a lot of other people who got into Rogerisation yeah. decided to end it by murdering. So, so Tracy, <laughs> no, not Tracy, <laughs> Kylie. Kylie. Yeah, of course, because that's the first thing you do. Kylie's murdered a bloke and buried him under his mother's bed. <laughs> no, under her mother's bed. Yeah, honestly. Tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's, it's bad news. I don't think anyone would recognise Coronation from that, no. but it's certainly changed since last no. time I saw it. Absolutely. Uh, this is Talk Sport. That was Porky Vision. Bienvenue au weekend sports breakfast avec Michel Quinn et Georgie Bingham. The Talk Sport with Benno Vans. It's the breakfast show that cooks up a souffle of sport and a pan of chocolat of pre match build up every Saturday and Sunday morning on Talk Sport. The hors d'oeuvre to another big weekend feast of football. Hey, La, does anyone know the French from Recon? The Weekend Sports Breakfast with Mickey Quinn and Georgie Bingham. Saturday and Sunday mornings from 7 on Talk Sport with Benno Vans. Four years warranty and roadside assistance as standard. Ooh, la, la. This Friday, the Euro Millions jackpot from the National Lottery is a staggering £99 million. Pounds. Plus, it's a mega Friday, and there'll be seven guaranteed UK millionaires. Play makes it possible. Estimated jackpot. Games, rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Hiya, I'm back. Darling, how are you getting on with the cooking? Oh, no, I've forgotten the drinks. This January, Asda's got great deals, including Foster's and Strongbow 12-pack for £7 each and six bottles of wine for £25, including Rosemount Diamond Selection Shiraz and Wolf Blast Vineyard Chardonnay. Asda, save money, live better. Selected stores, lines and availability. Drinkaware.co.uk. Wine priced from £4.97 to £8 each. Wine offer excluding Scotland. Max six per customer for beer and cider. The best news, exclusive interviews and unmissable opinion every week in Sport Magazine. Download your free copy of the UK's biggest sport magazine from the Apple newsstand now. At BMW, we believe being connected to the world is as important as being connected to the road. It's why the new BMW 1 Series with Connected Drive keeps you in touch, informed, entertained and safe. With advanced driver assist, intelligent traffic updates, Spotify and more. All from behind the wheel. How more well connected can you be? The new BMW 1 Series. Pure BMW. Football Club Expert lineup. Talk sport. 
Talk Sport, we are the two mics. Uh, Serena Williams is on court in the Australian Open. Watching for Talk Sport is Lisa O'Sullivan. And uh, Serena has a chance to break Radvanska's serve. They are four games all. If she takes advantage of this break point, she will be coming out to serve for the match, having taken the first set, six love. And the, the main difference in this second set has been an improvement in Radvanska's serve. Uh, her first uh, set, first win percentage in the first set 25% that went up to 68% but I have to say that uh, Serena Williams 80% in the first uh, the first set 92% in the second set and she is now going to come out and serve for this match and the other difference Serena Williams has been making mistakes in this second set so she has let the Polish player into the match uh, Williams has hit 38 outright winners and uh, Radvanska four so it really does show the measure of of uh, Serena Williams, who is coming out to serve. 41 minutes played in this second set. She's 5-4 up. Lisa, thank you very much indeed. You might have to do a bit of a last-minute commentary uh, just before uh, we get to the news because uh, this whole match may be over. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, Joe Anaconta is coming up. Quite a few uh, uh, remarks on your yes. Corky Vision thing. Yes. Uh, one says from Mark, uh, mm. Emily Bishop, not Emily Nugent. Oh, she was both, though. Oh, was she? She was married to a bloke called Bishop, yeah. um, who was the love of her life, and yeah. then she reverted to her maiden name, I think, Emily Nugent. Oh, OK, yes. Martin says, is Porky sure it wasn't Bob the Builder? No, it wasn't bother builder. OK. And lots of people are saying, um, mm. uh, repeating some of the words that you used about the good shafting, which I seem to be yes. enjoying, but also the fact that roulette only goes up to 36. Oh, is that right? So number's 1 to 36. Well, so might, obviously it, the odds are 36 to 1, not 33 I, I th- to 1. I think it was 27 then. I, I think it was 27. Couldn't have been 47 anyway. No, no, it couldn't have been 47, no. Yeah. Um, anyway, I've got a few responses from people who appreciate, uh, you know, the inside story here. Mm. Uh, it says, Jackie here says, uh, super confused about Curry, enough said. But another one says... Says, and this is from uh, it's from Paul. He says, uh, "Haven't laughed so hard in years listening to Porky's Curry Review." You know, sensational. Well, it wasn't supposed to be funny, uh, Paul. It's supposed to be informative, exactly. you know, telling you exactly what's going on in this street of shame. Yeah, well, really. Becky, Becky says, the most remarkable TV review of all time, the nation stops to listen to such genius. Well, absolutely. Coronation Street sex romps. That's right. And Lee says, I don't watch Corrie, but what Porky is telling me has made it about as clear as mud. Yeah, exactly well, right. you know, Lee, listen a bit closer, pal, and you'll, you'll pick up on what's going on, you know what I mean? Exactly it's right. It's not supposed to be easy to understand. Now, as we watch, uh, mm. 151 kilometres per hour, I think, is what Serena Williams is serving at. Yes. She's 15 love up. She's only three points away from winning the match. So, okay. So, uh, maybe a bit of porky commentary in a moment. But before I do that, yeah. let me just tell you some good news about Top Gun. I spotted this uh, over the, uh, the last couple of days. Well... Um, apparently, Jerry Bruckheimer oh, yes. put out a tweet. Because remember there was uh, some talk that Val Kilmer Top Gun 2. was going to get involved in Top Gun 2 yes. with Dina De Laurentiis, I think, or something like like yeah. Val Kilmer, uh, sorry, not Val Kilmer, uh, Tom Cruise and Jerry Bruckheimer spent the weekend mm. together, mm. and Jerry Bruckheimer tweeted out, uh, basically, uh, just got back from a weekend in New Orleans to see my old friend Tom Cruise and discuss a little Top Gun 2. Yes. So it looks as though they're definitely thinking about making Top Gun 2 now. Oh, yeah, but there's no announcement that it's, that it's going to happen, is it? Right, it's only two points left in this match, right? Yeah. In fact, there's only one point left, because Serena Williams in yeah, her so yellow attire... so she's now attire, got uh, match point. Match point. Uh, her, her hair is tied back beautifully in a sort of, you know, like a fox's bushy tail. Right. It looks fantastic. <laughs> and she looks in great shape. Yeah. Her opponent, who is the hard-faced <laughs> Polish lady... Uh, uh, is standing there Radvanska. knowing that her, yeah, Radvanska, her, her fate is about to be sealed. Serena yeah. has served, it's across the net. Radvanska's got it back, and now she's smashed it. Serena smashed it over. She nearly took the floor off the court, believe me, the speed of that uh, return. Now she goes up to her opponent at the net. A few kind words, a bit of a sort of handshake. Um, Radwanska looks quite pleased about it. Well, I'm, surpri- I'm not surprised. She gets about $400,000 for yeah. being a beaten semi-finalist. Mm. So she's had a good week, really. Yeah. Serena does a twirl, her usual twirl. It's like a ballerina, really. Yeah. Her skirt sort of twirls out. Looks and all very happy. Stuff. She looks very happy. She's going through to the final. And uh, she will undoubtedly well, have to say, be... if she plays like that, she's not going to get beaten in the no, final, No, she's going to she? beat her. She's going to become um, champion of Australia for the seventh time. That is undoubtedly is that the, the situation. Is that the the, uh, the, the, the sort of formal title? Yeah, yeah. Well, champion of Australia. No, it'll be Australian Open champion yeah. for the seventh time. Yeah. Now, Ms. Um, Zadv- what's her name? Svatlinka <laughs> is leaving the court. Radvanska. Radvanska yeah. is leaving the court. She's got a very rather... nice bag, hasn't she? Yeah, she's got a nice bag, but she's leaving 
moving rather rapidly. Yeah. She didn't stop and sign a few of those big tennis balls that no. they normally sign on the way out of the well, uh, sometimes arena. Sometimes they sign the camera, don't they? They sign the camera sometimes, yeah. And I have to say, what an elegant smash it was from Serena. Well, it was a volley, wasn't it? Uh, I don't think it was a volley. Wasn't it a volley? No, it was a half came, volley. She came, half volley. Into, she, came, she, half came volley. In, she came into the net and volleyed it. No, it was a half volley, mate, and it's from the back of the court. And uh, she uses a Wilson racket, by the way. I know that because there's a big W on the face of her racket. Yeah. So uh, and why are you giving them free publicity? Well, I bet I bet she gets about two million dollars a year for. Yeah, uh, no, but you don't get anything. So what's the point of you saying anything. it? Well, I don't know. Somebody from Wilson might be listening. What? Give me a free tennis yeah, racket? Right, yeah, send me a free racket in time for Wimbledon. Yeah, um, or something like that. You know mm. what I mean? You've never played tennis, though, have you? Oh yes, I've played a bit of tennis. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah, grass court. Grass uh, court. Yeah, Chester uh, grass court. Well, did you have club. a tennis t- a club at your school? Uh, yes, we had a tennis club. We had tennis courts, yes. Did you? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I used to play a bit. Grass summer. courts? Yeah, yeah, when I wasn't playing You know, when I, was, uh, when I was a kid, we used to play quite a bit of tennis yes. because my sister was quite good and she used to play for a school Oh yeah. and played for the county and all that. Oh, yeah. And so at one point mm. there was a club in Hampstead Yes. and we thought we'd go well, and join it. That's pretty posh. It was, yeah. yeah. Hampstead uh, Tennis Club. Mm. It was down this little lane yes. just down the road from where we lived. Yes. And we went there and they had two grass courts, right? Right. And my dad wasn't bad. Right. And my mother actually was okay as well, but yes. not, she didn't really get, care so much, no, right? No, no, but no. we went to join as a family. Right. And they wouldn't let us join because they didn't think my mother was good enough. Really? Which I thought was awful. Yeah, it was a bit awful. Because we were only like, you know, I, yeah. I think my sister was probably about 14. I was about 12. Yeah. And we used to play all the time at the local park. Yes, yes, sure. Um, and as I say, mm. she was at the point where she was quite good. Yeah. But they made us, uh, they split us all up and made us play in these kind of mixed doubles games. I see, yeah. And and, and, and issued this judgment yeah. to my dad and said, I'm terribly sorry, yeah. um, your wife's not a good enough player. Yeah, so well, you can't I see, join. Well, I Isn't that awful? Not really. Totally I, snobbish. I, I do believe in standards. I don't believe you should let Dross into uh, elitist clubs yeah, like that. Yeah, but it was meant to be a family thing. Though. Well, you know, I, I can understand why. I used to I used to like the old uh, atmosphere at the tennis club. It was great. Really? Yeah, you know, a few sherbets and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, honestly. You it's know. not about a few sherbets, yeah, though. it's great. The old pink gins and all the young ladies walking around in those little skirts and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? That's Did what that you enjoy. terribly sexist? It Sorry, does, that's not yeah. It does, sexist. actually, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was just a nice atmosphere. Did you ever win anything? Uh, that wasn't the point of the. Uh, that wasn't the object of the exercise. Right. Object of the exercise. Right. Did you ever actually play any tennis? Socialising. Yeah, but you used to play about. What uh, kind of shoes did you wear? Oh, you know, white uh, pumps. White know? pumps. Yeah, well, sort of pumps. Did you, know? you not wear green flash? Green flash was the thing. No, in those no, days. no, no. The point is, I mean, it was Dunlop it, green flash. It was much more of a social scene than anything else. We used to go down there and play about two uh, games, mm. literally, and then as soon as I heard the rattle of the. Um, you know that uh, you know the thing they bring down on the bar. Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as you heard that, the chainmail. Yeah, thing. the chainmail. As soon as you heard the rattle of that at five yeah. o'clock, when unlocking it and opening the bar, that was it. We right. finished playing tennis then. Mm. Went inside to uh, get but bladderated. This, this was not at school though. This was presumably later. Oh no, this was later when I was uh, when I used. Yeah, to... but I was saying you didn't play at school then. You didn't have. I did play at school. We had school. We had tennis courts at school. Well, did you play in a team? Is what I'm saying. Um, we did didn't you have play a team. Other schools. No, we didn't have a team. Really. Didn't have a team. No, mm. it wasn't that organised. We just had tennis courts where people played each other. Yeah. And of course, I was outstanding on the black tarmac court. Mm. Oh, that okay. was my favourite because I used to smash the ball down and it bounced very high. Right. Yeah. How about this from uh, uh, Sean in Melbourne? Right. Uh, thank you for providing great entertainment at work. Uh, here's one from Paul in Newcastle. Mm. It's all garbage. More action in one street than the Karma Sutra. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, and here's from David in Nottingham, uh, yeah. or Knots anyway. Porky Vision complete mm. with roulette sound effects. It was almost like being there. Yes. It seems the vicar's got his work cut out in Weatherfield. Oh, I tell you what he has, I, I'm, I'm telling you. Um, I'll tell you the other thing that would have been on Porky Vision, I'd have had a bit more time. Yeah. There was um, there was a programme last night on Channel 4 about Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. And but this was rather, uh, shall we say, um, slanted, even in, the, even in well, the way that... I didn't watch it, but I saw the, the preview. I'm not even going to... the fact that they called it, you know, the mad world of Donald yeah. Trump. Well, I'm not even going to tell you about some of the allegations that were made, in it? I think it'd be too dangerous, to yeah. be honest, because there were some, you know, terrible um, character assassinations of, of what he's all about. I right. mean... You know, we've known about Trump, haven't we, since the days when we worked there? Well, of course, yeah. Eastern Airlines used to be called Trump Air, didn't it? Uh, well, he start, he certainly bought pit, a bit of Eastern Air, uh, Airlines and turned it into the shuttle service, I Yeah, think, that's what he? I'm saying. He yeah. used to call it Trump Air right. and all that kind of stuff, you and know? And I stayed in the Atlantic City, uh, the, Trump t- the Trump Hotel in Atlantic City. Yeah, I stayed down was, there. Which was I his, stayed uh, down one there. Of, one, of his, uh, one of his places, and he had a bunch of places in Vegas. Yes, that's right. And, of course, Trump Tower was, was, was built when we were there in the 80s. Trump Tower was built in the 80s, and he had the top floor, didn't he? Um, I think he had all of it, yeah. Yeah, well, I I mean, yeah, well, he had all of it, but I mean, most of it. No, I mean, all of the top floor, yeah. All the top floor, that's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, that I... was where that guy from FIFA had the two apartments, wasn't that's it? That's right, it was, yeah. One yeah. for his cats and one for him. And it's where also, I'll tell you, I
Trump Plaza, maybe? Trump Plaza or something like that, yeah. was to do a fight with uh, English fighter Tony Simpson. Oh, yeah. Fourth Donald Lee. Mm. And I was sitting next to, um, you know, the... Strange place, Atlantic City, isn't oh, it? Oh, weirdo. Weirdo Because, place. I mean, all those big skyscraper hotels along the seafront. Oh, and all the... And then behind it, absolutely nothing. Yeah. yeah apart no, from sort uh, of shacks. I, I agree. And the boardwalk itself. Yeah. I mean, wow, you know, crazy old world yeah. of, uh, of almost like 1930s, yeah. 1940s sleeves. In fact... Isn't the isn't that American series based there? Well, Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. It's based in and Atlantic the Sopranos City, isn't it? goes down down to Atlantic City quite a bit Do as they? well because that's yeah. their kind of closest place to go gambling. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that mm. sort of their sort of town. Yeah, um, I went down and, there to do a story of Frank Sinatra. Oh, what was he because doing? Because he would, he was accused of being racist towards one of the croupiers. Yeah, he, uh, because he was playing at a table somewhere, mm. uh, and he said to this Asian a girl mm. who was from somewhere mm. in Southeast Asia, "Why don't you take a slow boat back to China?" No. And apparently this was ruled as being a terrible thing to say. Really? And he was apparently not very nice to her and he was very rude and he had this big entourage. Well, and, the other thing you know. he used to do in, in casinos in Vegas was he used to demand that the croupier serve the cards a, a certain way, yeah. which was against regulations. Right. Now, I, I'm not a great, uh, you know, card sharp and no. all that kind of stuff, but apparently that, that you know, you know the way they come From off the, the shoe. shoe. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, you're talking about blackjack. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, to be right. honest, but I know that he had... A, I know he... Well, he was playing blackjack on this occasion, so I think he oh, played blackjack. Oh, yeah, probably yeah. blackjack. Anyway, but in the in the Donald Trump thing, yeah. right, it was... You're absolutely right. It was a terrible um, character assassination and it, clearly designed, so I'm not sure why it even appeared in this country, to destabilise his run for the presidency. Yeah, which it's not going to do. I mean, we've seen the latest yeah. developments yesterday where he came out and said that he's not going to take part in the Fox debate. And he's so smart now at getting mm. around the media yeah. because he basically said, well, you know, I don't want this particular woman who he's had a falling out with in the past yes. because she's a lightweight. And he said, I'm not going to call her a bimbo because that mm. would be sexist, but mm. I'm just going to say she's a lightweight mm. and I'm refusing to take part. And he said, instead of taking part in that debate, uh, I'm going to go and have a rally uh, in the Midwest in Iowa right. where they're going to start voting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to give all the proceeds to the armed, uh, the, the, the veterans That's of this right. armed services. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's already, you know, much more popular now. Yeah. And he's saying, watch their ratings on the debate go yeah. down because if I'm not on the debate, nobody's going to watch it, and he's right. Yeah, I would have thought that uh, it being on Fox and us knowing the politics of Fox, yeah. that he would have done rather well there. Yeah, but he's the, fallen out with them as well, and because he's fallen he, out with he, Fox, he, why? Well, because he doesn't like their choice of, uh, of a moderator, the person who's going to run the debate. Oh, I see. And he's trying to say to them, if yeah. she's running it, I'm yeah. not going to be on it. Yeah, well, that's very odd. I'm surprised that Fox didn't um, you do the other way around. Instead of uh, letting him walk off, they might have got rid of their moderator and started. Yeah, but they can't. Right they else. can't be seen to be doing that. No, well, I suppose. I suppose not, but I bet they will next time. Mm. Put but it that way. I mean, yeah, I think they will, because the bottom line now is yeah. that they've got a debate with all these other people who nobody's really interested in. Yeah, no, that's true. No, he's, and people he's... are now beginning to re- realise that, actually, it's now pretty likely that he's going to be the Republican nominee. Well, I Incredibly. read Spectator magazine last week, because I read all those political journals to keep up with it, and they had a report from America, and they said that that revelation you've just talked about has literally smacked America in the face, mm. and the silent majority may arise just as the silent majority of voted the Tories into power in this country last yeah. May also arose. Right. Nobody wants to admit supporting Donald Trump, mm. but an awful lot of people apparently do. Yeah, and, and funnily enough, I mean, it, he's not as, I suppose, uh, toxic, if, if you like, as the Tory party is here, because yeah. a lot of people there don't mind admitting they like the guy. No, exactly. Which is all very odd. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. I've had one motto which I've always lived by. Dignity. Always dignity. Look at the light!